Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the live stream with me, Loish, and my friend Iris Compete. We are going to talk about humble beginnings. So we'll talk about our artistic journey from the very early steps to where we are now. Uh, and before we get into it, uh, full disclosure, this is a pre-recorded conversation. We actually had this conversation about a week before Lightbox for scheduling reasons, for technical reasons. This was the best way to do it. But I will be online. Maybe Iris will be online too yep. when we broadcast it and we'll be seeing your comments come in and we'll be in the chat, maybe responding to some of your questions. But what you're watching right now is, has already happened in the past. Um, so for now, please enjoy our talk, our live broadcast of our talk from last week. And I'm gonna start by introducing Iris or Iris as you pronounce her name in Dutch. She is a really good friend of mine. Um, I was familiar with her work for a long time through the internet, the magic of the internet. And uh, her, her beautiful magical work caught my eye immediately. Um, and then I met her in person at Playgrounds and she was so fun and down to earth and we instantly connected. Um, so she turned from an artist that I admired into a close friend of mine. Uh, she's a fantasy artist who makes watercolor paintings and sculptures as well of beautiful creatures, which she calls the fairies. Her work is immersive, full of magic and wonder, and I'll let Iris tell you a little bit more about what she does. But you said it all. <laughs> <laughs> I create whatever I like, and whenever I like to create. Um, yeah, it's pr pretty much, thank you so much for your kind words, making me look good. Um, <laughs> Course, what do I do? Want. That's the question. What do <laughs> I do? What do I do? I do everything. I, you know, uh, fairies. Um, I didn't set out to go do fairies, I, but you know, I ended up doing fairies in in the end, and I don't really mind. It's it's a good it's a good job to have. Yeah, and um, you don't you don't really create the fairies, right? You just document them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're it's, more it's, like a documentary like, creator than I than... feel very much like an adventurer. Like I am like a bit of a Indiana Jones type of <laughs> person. That's what I want to be, you know, with the whip and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's just documenting what could be or is or you know just look at things differently. It's so easy to look at things and see, oh, that's a stone. Well, that's a flower. But if you look closely at these everyday things, you can see so much more. And that's basically what our job is. We see magic in what's around us. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I do. I I, uh, I tell stories, or I try to tell stories. Sometimes they're quite muddled, though. But you know. We all try. Don't downplay it. Oh, Don't downplay yeah. it. You're very, very You good. know how it goes, girl. <laughs> you know how it goes. It's true. We were in a, a panel together about imposter syndrome, right? Oh, yeah. We had so much to say on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, it's it's a real thing, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's some I, I've heard people, there's, there's artists who don't have it. I wish yeah. I was one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, please Definitely tell me them. <laughs> and tell me how you don't get it. Like, because it is, it's crazy. It's like, even what we're going to do today is um, definitely there's this, this demon on my, my shoulders, like, oh, they're gonna see you. <laughs> you're really weird and awkward stuff. And I'm like, yeah, there goes my career. <laughs> you uh -oh. know, that's, that's what it, you know. That's yeah, it. that's it. Yeah, well, we just we got to get it out there. I think everybody started somewhere. Yep, those are the skeletons in our closet, and yep. just bring them out and show them <laughs> to the world. So right. yeah, that's that's it. And well, you know, I could introduce you and say the exact same thing besides doing fairies, but. I know your work. I knew your work from way, way back when uh, Deviant Art. I saw your work everywhere, and um, I was in love with it. I mean, the, the the colors, the flowing lines, the women, the women. They had shape. They had form. They had every. They had curves. They were amazing, and um, yeah, I pretty much wanted to be you. Like, oh. I still do actually. No. So yeah, 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 yeah. Girl, you're good. I actually good. didn't. I had no idea. I didn't know this until you just said it. Yeah, 
hey, I had to play it cool. <laughs> Couldn't go fangirling, could I? I mean, <laughs> but it all started on DeviantArt, right? It, you, it, like... Yeah, well, no, for me, it didn't. For me, it oh. was Elfwood, actually. Elfwood, I Elfwood. remember Elfwood. That was kind of a cool site, but I found it really difficult to understand at the time because it didn't have the social media format, right? It was more no, like... totally not. It was just plonking. It was more MySpace ish or something, yeah. right? Yeah, or even Hives. But, you know, the Dutch hives. Yeah, hives. My God. Oh, we're showing our age here, girl. <laughs> I think it's so funny that there's like a social network. So hives is like a, was really the Dutch MySpace. Yeah. And you had like a profile page that you could like, you could pick animated GIFs as the ba- title it's the dancing background banana. image. Yeah, the dancing banana. And I always thought it was hilarious. There was like a Dutch social media site that was named hives. Because in English, hives is like... Kind of rash, rash, like a really bad thing. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> know, one of those typical tone deaf things. You know, some of these people you had on on your social hives page, you got a rash yeah. from them. Like you didn't want to be friends with them, and you, but you know, you can you can ignore them. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, DeviantArt was where I I saw your work, and uh, we 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 met. A couple of years back at playgrounds we've been to playgrounds yeah. multiple times now and lightbox and all these and we hang out and and just have fun and we drink mojitos and yeah it's, it's moscow good. mules yeah oh, moscow mules, moscow oh, mules. Oh, that's yeah. our drink <laughs> oh next week we need, we need to get a moscow mule we should have had one now yeah we really should we would have we would have been in in la for lightbox if it weren't can, for this can we start now. over can we just yeah. you know Let's Cut reboot this, this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, but um, back to you because you're one of the artists um, that I found who who carved out a career for herself. You you've always felt like a pioneer to me. Like you were the one Dutch artist I knew um, that that was making it. And mm-hmm. for me, that was a big inspiration. And I think for a lot of people, you were an inspiration are an inspiration i should say because you still are and 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 you're you're you know you were on top of things with social media and with deviant art and that's so amazing because you basically became let's call it famous because you're famous i don't Um, feel famous (laughs) (laughs) you are i've seen you no you're not yeah well you are but you're not You, you you don't act it there's a difference. Yeah, there's a Dutch saying for that, right? Do maar normaal, dan doe je al gek normaal. Gek genoeg. Do maar normaal, dan doe je gek genoeg. So yeah, that's what I love about like these events that we normally go to a lot, like Lightbox and Playgrounds, is that like you meet all these heroes, but then artists in the end, like when you meet them in person, we're yeah. all just people. And we all have like these common struggles and this common place where we started from. And yeah. honestly, like I know it sounds so corny to say artists are all just people, but there were times where I met heroes of mine yeah. and I just like could barely believe that they were standing in front of me. And like all I could think of was like, oh, you're amazing. You're yeah. greater than life for me. Um, yeah. But then once you really sort of settle down and get to know everybody, it's like we all have these universal struggles. We all started yeah. somewhere. And and that's what I really love about these yeah. events. And I think that's why for us, it felt like such a good decision to focus on like our beginnings as an artist for this event, as well as a way to like sort of it's back down, down to earth yeah about... breaking down the barriers actually yeah. it's like the, it, it's so easy to put people on pedestals who yes. you know it's so easy to put you on a pedestal because you've done all these amazing jobs and 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 have you know millions of followers so it's easy to put you high on a pedestal and say oh it's lois but you're not doing any justice to you as a person or it, it's making um me in uncomfortable approaching you uh so yeah. i never put you on the pedestal of that's lois because yeah. i mean there's that's counterproductive you're an artist i am an artist we have uh w- w- we hit it off quite quickly and we've been friends ever since and um it's very good to approach artists uh on the same level and yeah uh, there's always going to be one or two that are like no I'm an artist, you know. 
That's always yeah. going to be one of those. Yeah, yeah. But we all started somewhere and there was always a yeah. point where we just like had no idea what we were doing. And that is something yeah. that like, I think it's, you know, traditionally it's very difficult to know, like if you look at the big art heroes, to see their old art, like, you know, if we look at like the great impressionists or whatever, we don't usually get access to like oh. their really bad first drawings because it was a different era. But I think now we live in an era where people share so much throughout their whole life that we can now see so much more about where somebody came from. Yeah. And, and that's what I think is so uh, fun about sharing old art, you know, to, to like, to just put it out there and then um, and people can see like sort of how your style grew and how you also struggled creatively. But the thing is that I've, I've posted a lot of my old art in the past. Like people have seen, I think my art grow over time because I've been sharing it since the beginning. But for you, I have no idea. Like, oh, you, you should scroll really back like. on my Instagram for like a yeah? couple of years. You can see some really weird Ooh. stuff. Because for but me, yeah. I discovered your work when you had like kind of found your style. So for yeah. me, you kind of like popped out of nowhere with these incredible watercolors. Yeah, I, 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 I feel I had a different um, start than than you had uh and and i definitely did, didn't get on on social media a lot like i think my first post was in 2013 or something and then before that it was alfred which yeah. had you know not a lot of followers and uh, i was just not as interested and um so yeah there's there's what you see is just from 2013 to now and there's already in that small space of time it's like seven years there's this huge uh change in in my 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 style or in my voice as an artist and um as i was looking up or work and 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 finding old stuff um it was interesting to see how much i i changed in a short period of time and before that I was just you know floundering I was just all over the place and just yeah. trying to find my voice and um yeah it's 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 interesting to start sharing these things because yeah it's it's uh, definitely imposter uh, syndrome yeah. knocking I mean I have I wasn't a good artist from the get-go I I and and I don't think many are uh, and I see so many artists the young artists talk about these and uns uncertainties and, and as insecurities and I'm like dude you're 20 yeah they're just beginning yeah it's time to play around just have <laughs> it's, fun it's with what just you're doing. take this time you don't have to have your style when you're 20 it's it's nice but in you'll develop over time anyway so your yeah. style will be different when you're 80 anyway so it's yeah. there's never a set style um yeah. and i i think it's very important that people keep that in mind when they're doing this and when they're on this journey that whatever you do enjoy every second of it like and yeah. even enjoy those fuck ups i'm sorry to say this yeah. but you know <laughs> enjoy them um, yes exactly it's part of the journey but should we jump into it yes let's do that all right so we're gonna start showing we're gonna um turn by turn show our old work um and and kind of like talk about it with each other and iris i think it's good if you start maybe with your old work since you were just talking about your creative journey oh. Yeah, um, we'll do the very first beginnings uh, right. um, up until going to middle grade school. I think that's middle, like, yeah. We're, well, for the first category, we chose some categories and the first category, we're not too strict about what's in them, but there's more of a rough <laughs> guideline. Um, the first category is baby steps. So it's our oldest art that we could this find. This feels a bit like RuPaul Drag Race. First, first category is... <laughs> let's do it let's do it let's, let's share it. screen guys okay we're set that's it these are my first very first pieces i was oh, wow. yeah i mean it it's not going to get any better than this i mean this was my very first drawing at uh at, at school kindergarten um i had to you know i had to make this um 
suitable for for public viewing because oh, yeah. iris, iris was um you know is that like not, a bathtub picture dressed. or something oh yeah yeah <laughs> you know the childhood one. photos thrown in the mix <laughs> hey <laughs> nice and then yeah i was i this was done in 1984 so i'm from 1979 so i was yeah. five years old and i'm i'm still so very amazed by the fact i drew five fingers yeah don't ask I think me the attention to detail in all of these right? is impressive yeah yeah this is my favorite though this yeah. is my father. Yeah. Um, I don't have this or drawing anymore. And it, it was a color drawing, but um, I gave this to my father when he died. It, it went into his casket. Um, and I, I just love that drawing because I this was our car and it's a, a, an orange car. And it was just had this wonderful, uh, yeah, rooftop thingy and I counted the chickens we had and I drew yeah. them all and then I went a bit overboard with my fantasy here because my father didn't have any stubble beard or earrings or anything but I mean this is a good kid drawing it's it, imagination is, is important it was there already we can yeah. see that you know it's funny too like it's it looks like you applied i don't know if this is intentional but that you have some perspective going in those chickens because yeah. the ones yeah. in the front are bigger yeah. than the ones in the back i mean look at that i, I, I told That's you incredible. it's not going to get any better than this this is my this is the beginning i should have stuck i mean i should have stopped here <laughs> it's like this is it stop while you're ahead stop while um, you're ahead i think I, it's beautiful that you have a drawing in there with with the deep sentimental value yeah yeah I, I at one point i'm i'm sad i don't have it anymore but it was made for my father so I, it went with my father so yeah. there's that and then let's go to the next oh you know oh my god what can i say I mean, we're already deep into the fantasy stuff oh, at I, this age. I mean, how old I were you when you drew these? I think I was about seven ish, seven, eight. It's, it's, it's a different, like, there's, I didn't recall, I didn't write down uh, my, the date or the, my age, but I did sign them. Like, oh, yeah. you know, I did sign each and every one of them, but I think I was about seven or eight ish. I think this is older though. Yeah. Well, this is definitely, I mean, that's a, a kabouter on a log, a gnome on, but look at those fingers. It's, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think he's sticking that, like that, that, that pipe in its nose. I yeah. don't know what, you know, that's, that's a perfectly valid way to smoke right? a pipe. I know. It's I nice. think it's, I think it's amazing how much shading you applied to those trees. I think that tree is actually so cool. I mean, it is a cool at, tree, right? Yeah, and then this was my dream dress. Um, oh, yeah. There's a lot of lace, people. There's a uh, flowery fabric, flowers, lace, lace, flowery stuff, lace, pearls, uh, rhinestone, lace, 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 lace. So I liked lace back then. Yeah. Yeah. Do you I, still I, like lace? Maybe yeah. it was black lace. <laughs> It would still be, maybe your fashion sense is still somewhat similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you remember how you, what you were thinking when you drew these? Do you, like, how, what were you aiming I for? I actually, when I found these pictures, I was like, what? Did I do these? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what did you smoke? <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel a lot about a lot of my old art, too. That I look at it and I'm like, I'm not sure what I was thinking. Like, I remember making it. But I don't remember my motivation for making yeah, no, it. No, I, I mean, I was trying to tell stories here. I know I was a, a very big fan of the Efteling, for instance, which is mm. a Disney World or Disneyland in, in the Netherlands, which is a great theme park with all these um, uh, fairy tale forests and, and, and uh, castles and stuff like that, which I absolutely loved. And I think this one was pretty much based on that, like, and there's quite a lot of detail going on. I can see here that there's, there's like a spider in a web, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, there is a high attention to detail. I yeah. can really see that also in the earlier slide. I think so, that you had an eye for detail from, from yeah. the beginning. Hey, but it gets better, gets okay. better. Yeah. I drew a lot of 
fairies from Brian Froud and Ellen Lee. So oh, I found so this cool. sketchbook and I, I think I was, again, eight, nine, and I was just uh, copying them all. And, um, you know, not too shabby here and there. There's definitely something going on. I, I, it's interesting. I think it's pretty good, actually. I mean, how old were you when you drew these? I think I was around eight, nine again. Like that. Yeah, that would have blown me away as an eight or nine year old. I would have lost it looking at this. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was pretty smart here. <laughs> Did you ever show these to Brian? I, I didn't. And I'm actually planning to, next time I see him, I'm going to take the, the, this particular sketchbook with me and show, because these are mostly um, actually Alan's pieces, I think. Uh, I, I know this is one of Alan's and that one and that one. Um, you know, it's, it's good. It, it'll be fun to see their re reactions. Like, yeah. oh, you certainly improved. <laughs> <laughs> but I think these show a lot of promise. I really can't really, I can't really fault these, except I think that the fairies in the bottom left corner, kind of comical, just like the, the juxtaposition between their poses, kind of cracks me up for some reason, but I, these are really good technically. I, I mean, this is one of those things you, you have to do when you, you're, you know, you're learning things, you're copying yeah. the artists you love, and that's how you learn anatomy and stuff like that. And uh, like, these are not perfect, but you know, I was a kid. It doesn't have to be perfect. I still think no. that that front leg of that horse is really looking fine, and that head is really cool. So yeah. it, there's, there's, there's. I mean, you know, I think it's amazing looking at this. How consistent you've been with your your artistic passion? Because I think I feel yeah. like for me, I explored lots of different stuff, and I think for you, from a very young age, you knew that fantasy art was your thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew incredible. because I I always had this 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 like I listened to books on tapes like the the fairy tale on tape and stuff like that continuously and had these books on fairy tales and Hans Christian Andersen and you know Little yeah. Mermaid and all that kind of stuff and I just that did something to me and I never got into things like manga or or anything like that because. I was very introduced to internet ver at a very uh, late age. Like I had my first computer when I went to art school, which was 18 years old. So I didn't have a computer before that. So I never really, you know, I wasn't interested in, or I, I didn't get that. Um, I didn't get any of that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely, um, I think, a reason why I, I start doing this and especially this page with all these 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 uh, copies I, I they made me so happy seeing this because you know I'm here 30 odd years later and I'm doing it still and I'm I'm you know I'm doing stuff that these guys are doing which is yeah freaking pretty cool that is amazing I mean we went along the way and we forgot some of this but <laughs> We, we shall see that later. I think right. this is the last one of the, oh no. Oh, yeah. right. This is the piece de resistance. Oh my God, your dinosaur I mean, drawings. This is in the time where you had to do um, school. Um, how do you call that? Like, um, Bergstücke? Um, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what you would call that, but just school assignments yeah, where you, you have to, to write, explain about yeah. a topic and you make drawings. For you had to school. write about dinosaurs or you could yeah. pick a topic and I was very much into dinosaurs and dolphins. <laughs> and I mean, I made this dinosaur booklet and I hand wrote everything. I will sh not share any of that, but I mean, look at that. I made a pop-up. Right. You, you showed me that earlier I made this a week, like the real life pop-up and they it come was... right out of the page when you open them. It was so, <laughs> so, so funny. And then, you know, on the, on the back of the, the essay, I had this, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a Tyrannosaurus <laughs> uh, doofus. Yeah. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus muffcase. <laughs> it is, I mean, no, I love, I love I, this sketch. It is so 80s. 
It is. It is. It, in the it, 80s, you had all these wacky dinosaur cartoons yeah. and they were yeah. always very lumpy and they had these huge eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I was and really into dinosaurs too as a kid. I, I, um, I mean, I feel like it's a hallmark of kids who grew up in the 80s and early yeah. 90s. Like all yeah, of there's, there's something going on there that's yeah. definitely showing my age. <laughs> <laughs> mine too mine too yeah and hey but i got very very high grades i mean that's a nine that's about uh, what would that be a nine ten that's is like highest. an a yeah so yeah it's like one step below the a plus a yeah a, a. <laughs> so yeah nice job i mean put your 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 skills that was if one for next I oh know. yeah that's the next one but All i right. put my skills to good use and i uh, yeah i this was some of the oldest stuff I found. This is some of the first things. And it was fun to see how much fantasy there was already there from copying fairies by Brian and Ellen yeah. and then do, you know, doing my own stuff. And um, yeah, I, I think it, it was fun to see those. It's been a very long time since I've last seen those sketches. And yeah. You know, I think that it's clear, it's clear to me that you were talented from the start. And I can imagine that you were probably celebrated a lot by your parents or teachers, classmates as, as a talented artist. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I was um, uh, encouraged by my, my parents. My teachers were um, a little less enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't as interested in the academic side of things. I wasn't good at math or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I, I just wanted to draw a lot. Um, and I think I developed more of my, my, my drawing because I was uh, the youngest of, of three children. Like the, the difference between my youngest brother and myself is like seven years, which is a huge difference when you're a kid. Yeah. I mean, I was, when I was one, he, my, my youngest brother was seven and then, you know, he's 14 and I'm seven. That's yeah. a huge difference. You don't want to play with your seven year old sis, kid sister. Yeah. 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 So you had to like, keep yourself entertained. Uh, yeah, definitely. And then drawing was, was that thing for me. Yeah. So yeah, All I right. want to see your stuff. Okay, great. Um, I'm ready. Let's Go see. for it. Share screen. There we go. All right. Do you see it? Yes. Ooh. Let me double check the full screen. All right. So this is my earliest art that I could find. Um, the one on the left, uh, I only drew the ears. So it was a <laughs> it was a school assignment, and this is something I did when I was four. This is truly the oldest art I could find. Um, and all I had to do was draw in the ear of Miffy and the dog. And I do feel that I didn't really do a good job on that. Oh, you I can did a see, great job. I can see some, some like design flaws here, uh, especially Miffy's smaller ear. Um, I clearly didn't get it, but I tried. You know? I mean, it's a good try, and and ears are never, I they're never symmetrical, so I I I can't fault you for that one. And I love the dog's ears because he's like, huh? Yeah, he's looking up. Well, I huh? was from a young age. I was pretty good at like, I was maybe not as technically skilled, but I was good at coming up with like a reason why I had made that decision. So I remember at some point I drew some some character with one leg longer than the other, yeah. and some mean classmate was like one leg is too short. And I was like, that's because he's taking a step forward. And everyone was like, oh my God, that's amazing. But I made it up on the spot. So I was like, definitely improvisational with, with my reasoning. Um, so I guess I could say now that the other ear going up was a conscious decision to add some personality there. Uh, he's, then, listening. he's listening. I want to I know the story behind that like I, I can I can see a giant with a jacket and buttons and stuff like that and yeah I can see a face and eyelashes and everything and a smile yeah. and tell me about it because it's awesome <laughs> yeah I mean when I look at it now I can see a lot of like tension there there's like the bigger character with like a kind of like with arms coming out and almost looks like it has one single eye in the middle like a cyclops and then there's like a tiny little person over to the side you see yeah there. yeah yeah I don't know. I could come up with a story now based on that. Of course, it would all be 
totally made up. I have no idea I mean, what I was thinking when I made this. <laughs> wouldn't that be awesome though to revisit this one now? Yeah, I think in general, revisiting childhood art has something incredibly <laughs> wholesome about it. So maybe it would be worth it. Ooh. Did you ever see what Ikea did? Like for Ikea, they, you could send in like a, like kids sent in childhood yeah. drawings and then they made like stuffed animals Plush. out of yeah. those drawings. Yeah, there were a couple of those that I really wanted. Yeah, there were some <laughs> really cool ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the one here all the way on the right, I don't know if the head is obscured, but um, that doesn't well, matter. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is like a way older drawing. This drawing is from when I was first learning digital art, but it was my first attempt at perspective. And it's actually a drawing of Neo from The Matrix, yeah, yeah. from below, holding his hand out, stopping the bullets. Oh, so cool. Um, and it was my first attempt, and when I look at it now, I can just see like how how completely lost I was and how frustrated. I really couldn't translate the, the shapes into perspective. Yeah, but perspective was, is so difficult. And how yeah. old were you? I was, I think, 15 at the time. Yeah. So. I mean, 15. so many people can't even draw perspective at 30. So let, <laughs> let alone 15. But it's so impressive that you yeah. were already working in digital. Oh, yeah. Well, I started working digital like fairly quickly and I, I kind of learned how to draw di like through digital media. So yeah. that definitely like helped me in developing a workflow for myself. But I definitely had to include this drawing because it was really one of those first attempts, you know, and it really shows like how frustrating it can be that first time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love his uh, facial expression though. Oh yeah. He's very That's like, very matrixy. Yep. Um, so another thing that I have is <laughs> Uh, <laughs> in in like this old book full of memories, I have this thing called Lois von Barda's computer artwork. And I have to explain, I didn't actually draw the pumpkins and the cyclists over there on the left. The they beheaded came... cyclists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they came from, um, from like a really, a software, and I'm still struggling to find out what software that is, but it was like an animation software that you could play around with and you could like, make a brush you could like shake a brush and then it would be an animated brush and every time you clicked it would create a new frame and what i did like i learned how to screenshot stuff so i would just screenshot the characters and put it in paint and then add like legs and hands and stuff. oh it's so very cool. collage -y. uh and i thought it was just so funny like i i was in a phase so this was when i was in fifth grade so i'd say like 11 10 or 11. This I was in a so phase cool. where I just wanted my art to be funny. So I did a lot of like gory jokes. <laughs> oh, it is funny because I'm, I'm wondering what that like dart is going. Yeah, why is there a dart going in his butt? That's the kind of stuff that I thought was so funny as a 10 year old, like a dart going into someone's butt. And the fact that like the girl pumpkin <laughs> has like a ribbon and high heels. <laughs> was like totally my thing and the, the drawing on the right comes from that little computer artwork booklet and that's how I drew in paint I would like sort of bring it I think paint had a couple of stock textures or like maybe they were standard backgrounds on, on uh, I mean don't, at the time. don't diss it because this is this is better than my digital <laughs> attempts <laughs> Yeah, this was my computer. So I spent a lot of time on paint in the, and it's really too bad that I don't have a picture of this masterpiece that I made at some point. <laughs> this was before I discovered print screen. Um, I actually copied the entire interface of paint pixel by pixel on the, the paint canvas. And I thought this was a move of great genius. Like I had one by one copied a whole interface. And I showed it to my parents. I printed it out, showed it to my parents. And they said, that's a screenshot. And I was like, what is a screenshot? What are you talking about? And then they explained what that was to me. And then I realized that all my work had been for nothing. Um, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, you uh, were way ahead of me. I mean, I was 18 when I got the first computer. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, we had a computer in our house from when I was around 10 or so. And didn't yeah. have internet or anything, but we were just like you know, play around. And just like you, I had quite an age difference. Well, less of an age difference with my siblings, but four years, basically. Yeah. I'm, I have a four-year older sister and a four years younger sister. And we did play together, but we also, you know, had a little too much of that age difference to always play together. So we yeah. often did our own thing. So I spent a lot of time in my room when I got the computer, just messing around and, and making stuff like this. Um, 
Oh yeah, and I have to include this drawing as well. This ah. is from later when I was around 13, I think, that I made this. But this was like, I was in a phase. So, you, you know, I guess my story about copying the paint interface says something about my mindset at that time, because I really believed that like copying stuff that I saw was the best way to learn. So I went through a phase where all I did was just like draw what was in front of me. So I didn't apply. I mean, that's, that's a good thing. And that's how you learn. I'm, that's, yeah. this, this is still life. I kind of missed out on like, I didn't learn to really incorporate my imagination in my yeah. early art. So it was a lot of like just drawing what was in front of me. And uh, so this is a drawing of my computer setup uh, when I was around 12, 13 years old. I love and the cross hatching on that screen. Yeah, I was like really so into cross hatching. That was my, my technique. And you can really see like, the chunky old monitor. Yeah. Like I can hear the creaks. If you turn it on, the whole thing would creak. Um, like the CD-ROM station and the hard, the little, the floppy disks. Yeah. Uh, and on, it was on this computer that I became extremely skilled at Minesweeper and Mahjong. I would play those games all day because I had no internet. So I would just get really good at Minesweeper. Oh, the first, no, I never understood Minesweeper. I, I, I did a lot of Fauchons. Yeah. The, Fauchons, the, the, the yeah, card the, game. The card game. That oh, yeah, was, yeah. that was my <laughs> yeah. game. I oh, remember Solitaire that the cards would bounce along yeah. the end and it was incredibly satisfying. It was so satisfying to finish Solitaire. <laughs> but this is what people did before, you know, we had computers, but we had no internet. We just did. Yeah. Extremely yep. dumb things. And um, the kids watching this are thinking floppy disk? Yeah, huh? what's that? I think like one word file fit on there and nothing else. That was one MB or something. Like a yeah. floppy disk was one MB. And then later on when I started to go to uni, uh, we had these um, um, disks that could hold 15 MB or something. You know? Yeah, the, and that was the, like insane. That was the shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's insane <laughs> all right that's it for my baby steps and Ooh. the next the next um category we had thought of was high school drawings or art drawn in our teenage years oh man this is going to be painful let's you know let's just dive in and, and have some fun with this because yes. i mean guys you need to see this this is just yeah this nice. was I I don't even know where to begin. Um, yeah, I so made what's, a, that, what's over there in the top right? What is this? The the impossible magic? Oh, let's just zoom in on that one. That's the impossible. Watch the spelling, huh? <laughs> the impo imposable. Imposable magic. I have a, the Im and then impossible. <laughs> trail of life never ending life is tough uh -huh, i was hip before it was hip was this your was this your music or something no yeah i i just i decided to you know i i love labyrinth and uh mc escher escher um the the mathematic uh, artist from the netherlands and that you can see those staircases there yeah 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 I had a vellum sheet and then put over uh, my music if I had a band. And, you know, King Gold and Coron Coronation. I haven't got a clue where that came from. Life is a crime. Yes, Life is, is a crime. I like that one a lot. Right. <laughs> People, this is copyrighted. And then <laughs> yellow sheet. Before you know it, Beyonce has this stolen. I mean, come yeah. on, don't. Uh, she's that actually better than I am. And then the yellow shoe and the red, st the red stone. The red stone. And the rain. This all sounds very like 70s psych rock right? kind of stuff. I mean, you know, it's interesting. Sparks the imagination for sure. I, that's, that's what we are here oh, for. Oh, the Michael Jordan yeah. one. The arm is just, it's, it's, dis it's disconnected. It, it's, you know. Is that um, intentional? Oh, that's his. Oh, that's just his T-shirt. That's his T-shirt. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was seeing like no, zombie and I, style. No, and this no, 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 Disconnected no, no. arm flying I'm in not, the air. I'm not that gruesome. I'm not you, Lois. Yeah. I'm not you. <laughs> <laughs> no, all you can missing see, is a dart. <laughs> I, I was I was catching his face here, but I you know decided to just uh, skip that because that was yeah. horrendous. And but then. 
I don't have a clue why I did this because I don't even like football I, I, or uh, basketball. I suspect um, I did this for a friend in high school, oh, um, yeah. early high school, so 11 or 12 years old. Same as with this. I mean, look at that. Don't ask me. <laughs> I have I don't to ask. Know. What is it? Yeah, you have to. I mean, you know, I, I think that's another, because it's a, another square Is it like shape. a Venetian mask? It is. Oh, it's I see. a cat face. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't know why. And then next to it is uh, the singer of uh, a band called Army of Lovers, which was a big thing in the 90s. Uh, and she was this, this dolled up, a model with a lot of boobs and a lot of lips and you know she was dressed up like she is here um which was interesting uh i, I remember drawing this for a friend who was really in love with her so that's it's very sweet bad. Of you. it's bad Die. It's i seem to have forgotten everything i knew as a kid you know and then what i think is so funny about that you know the one you were just showing right the singer is like you can see how often you erased the eyes yep. and kind of like redid it mm -hmm. and did each individual eyelash yep that's uh, and the wrong way they were <laughs> yeah. pointing the wrong way it's like yeah i mean I told you it wasn't going to get any better than those first three pieces. I think it's very sweet. I think it like shows your commitment. You I know, try. you're really going for it. I mean, I try. And then we have Foo Fly. Foo Fly. Foo Fly. I, I, you know, an attempt of a logo kind of thingy. Very 90s, I think. Very 90s. Anything to do with the Foo Fighters? No. No. I don't even know what it is. I truly don't. I, I love how in the 90s, like, <sighs> in the 90s, like, graffiti was really popular yep. and, like, yep. bubbly letters and stuff like that. That's, I can see where this is coming from. Yeah. And then hand anatomy still struggling with that. And I was, that was from 97. And then, you know, I, I loved the band called Take That, which featured <sighs> Robbie Williams. And I just... These are just two of the many, many, many pictures I drew for of, of, of them. And I just copied those pictures from all the, all the magazines that were out there. You know, every single magazine, I was just copying those. And I think it's, it's actually, it was actually really good for understanding facial uh, anatomy without actually um, being conscious about it. I, I wasn't yeah. really doing anything uh, consciously you know what I mean so uh, there's obviously a time difference of a couple of years between yeah, these yeah, two yeah. Yeah. but it's interesting to see and you know that I, those guys I mean that was my teenage crush yeah Ooh. I love them too I remember so we always flew because uh, we lived outside of the Netherlands for well, most of my childhood and at some point we lived in Indonesia but every summer we went back to the Netherlands and it was a very long flight and they would have like uh, the entertainment um, yeah. would loop, you know, you get yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was in a, in a, it was before the on demand stuff. Yeah. It was in the nineties. So you had to like, just, yep. it was a certain time that the movie started and you needed yep. to tune in. And for the rest, it was all in a loop. And I remember that um, the take that video, what was their most famous one with the black and white video and, and Mark Owens is like in the rain, you know, and he's got that hat. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, I'm spacing back out here. For good? Is yeah. It back for good? Yeah, that was their later, later stuff. Yeah. So I was watching that video as like an 11 year old and I was like, who are these guys? They're so interesting. The song is so beautiful. <laughs> oh, I girl. So <laughs> I mean, I was, I was a fan before that video and they've oh, done yeah. some interesting stuff that you're like, oh. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if that if if those clips are made now, it's like oh, they're gonna get banned. I mean, so much was possible, and they were was, edgy. They were very edgy and very. It, 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 
let's call them corny. But hey, no matter. I met them. I kissed Robbie Williams. The end. Oh wow, really? I did. Yeah. Oh my god. That was my claim to fame. That's so romantic. Rest is <laughs> did you guys maintain a years long correspondence yes, in which no, you confessed your but, love to you one know, another? I, I I did in my mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been there too. I've been there too. I've had very extensive romances in my mind. <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to share some of those. Like, we need to, we need to continue because there's more goodies to, sh- to see. Yeah, this um, is back to the fantasy genre. Yeah, you know. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really I mean, seeing your style come through in these. I, oh, please don't tell me that. <laughs> The, the bottom right but you will get there we'll get there i mean yeah i mean i i can see i i don't even i haven't got words for this guys i don't you know i'm looking at this and i'm thinking oh girl just lay off that pencil a bit like don't press too hard and i just you know i went in there and just yeah yeah. You were also a fan of the cross hatching. Oh yeah. Well, I, I tried to do to do something. And I ended up it, it being more of a, a mess than anything else, really. I don't but, think it's that bad. I think it's I think you have a pretty good um approach in the sense in these sketches that you have like an area that you're making high detailed and then kind of leaving the rest a bit more sketchy and loose. And that always is, I think, it always adds a lot of imagination to the sketch. Yeah, I, I think I was not doing that uh, on purpose though. <laughs> I think I was just- Yeah, like, just, just gave up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, I had enough. But uh, the thing is, I, I, you know, that this is what I was just doing. Yeah. Um, in my free time and 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 like end of our uh, end of uh, middle grade school and just doing this and uh, have you know discovering things and and trying to figure out what stuff i mean this is kind of manga ish you know i'm trying to find uh something yeah so are these all from your imagination or are they yeah yeah oh wow yeah this is not this is not like there's no definitely no reference here maybe some reference on those arms i mean those muscles kind of look like they had some reference but it's oh, yeah. pretty much and and it shows kind of shows but it's yeah, you were into you were into the three the four fingered hand i see yeah um for me that was very much um um like elvish demonish type of uh yeah creatures back then yeah it's like a stylistic choice yeah it's definitely a choice i don't know exactly why i did made that choice uh maybe because i had a hard time uh, drawing fingers and just decided one less to draw is easier <laughs> but i i think it's funny to see how i'm already oh we're already oh man i'm i'm no i'm already doing those um creatures like those yeah. those weird creatures i'm i'm seeing in my work now so that's that's fun to see in these um images that i really think need a lot of work yeah. but you know there's something there it's 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 a lot of lines and there's a lot of things happening i think there's a lot of expressiveness and a lot of um, yeah a lot of I, fantasy like a lot of imagination yeah that you're putting into it yeah and i you know i feel page after page after page like this and i actually really like this one here that demon type dude here because I feel, yeah, there's something going on there. He's like holding a snake. And yeah, I mean, the anatomy is not that bad. Um, I love how you have a thing like kind of ugly, scary trolls and then like super sexy ladies. Yeah. Yeah. And I, the fun thing is I still sketch like this. I still fill my page f- with all these creatures and um, so that's that's fun to see that I still have that way of sketching where I just start sketching and one sketch um, informs the other. 
and yeah. I just keep going instead of you know doing neat sketches next to each other and actually making sense I just nah because in the end these sketchbooks are not for public viewing they're for me <laughs> and no one else I mean um but you know it, it's fun I, I can see I, I definitely can see Brian Froud coming back in this like I'm I'm going back to my roots and that's it and I think that's yep that's oh that's definitely we're going into the vault of shame oh so yeah we're gradually that's going the into part. the vault of shame so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm just giving this to you back right. to you Lois yeah so here are my um my sort of high school era things um let's see oh. So I'm going to start with uh, a lot of the fan art that I did. So as a teenager, I was super motivated. Like I would fall in love with a musician or like a celebrity figure. And then I would like really be super motivated to draw them. Uh, and that like kind of drove my improvement for a long time uh, as yeah. a teenager. So here on the left, we've got Hanson sketches. Um, the one of Zach in the bottom right corner of that page was like my best drawing at the time. Like I was super proud of it. I Should love that okay. nose. That nose is so good. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, that is really good. That's really good actually. I learned a lot about drawing faces from continually drawing Hanson. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. time after time after time. I would also send like I had a lot of photocopied versions that I would then color in. So the darker ones are photocopied and then colored in with, with colored pencil. And then I would sometimes send them to magazines, like teen magazines, and yeah. hope that it would get published as fan art. Um, I also had a summer, it was the World Cup in 1997. And that summer I was like really into the World Cup for some reason. I think, uh, you know, I just watched it a lot with my dad and, and I, um, the emotion, it was like a very intense World yeah. Cup because Ronaldo, like not the Ronaldo that's popular now, but the Ronaldo that's popular back then, um, was like just one of the best. And every time Brazil played, it was like, Ronaldo's playing, he's doing an incredible hat trick. I didn't know what any of that meant. But <laughs> for some reason, I fell in love with Ronaldo. So I had like a lot of drawings of Ronaldo and I had a t-shirt with the Ronaldo and the nine, the Brazil nine. So I was really into him for a while. And then the top, the top, top right ones are of the singer of Creed. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. really into Creed as a 15 year old. I listened to it. Oh, you are 15. I mean, those are good. Yeah, I, I, when I look at them now, I'm like, that's not bad. But I kind of Whoa. discovered a trick at the time, which was to draw in black and white. And then it was just a lot easier to capture yeah. somebody's yeah. likeness. If I could yeah. just like reduce it to strong values. Although I kind of like gave up on the face in the one up there. No, I um, like that actually. That's a stylistic choice. I, yeah. I, I, I really like because there's still some you can still see the hint of the nose and, and the eyes and stuff. And there is something happening. There's a, there's a lot of movement in the background. And, yeah. and, and I was man, really the, proud of these at the time. I, Very proud. You should still be proud. Actually, yeah. I mean, they're those not eyes, no, they're, they're certainly not bad. I but mean, I saw, I saw a lot of like, I saw a lot of beauty in this Scott Stepp guy, the singer of Creed mm. that like later just vanished when I realized that he was kind of a jerk. Um, yeah. And so you can see really small uh, underneath the close-up sketch, some text. And I wrote, loser, loser, because I decided <laughs> that he was no longer worthy. And I was wondering, <laughs> who's loser? <laughs> yeah, him. So I kind of got over all of these people really fast, but they were like very intense, like, you know, one-sided romances that I had with these, um, these they're, people. They're absolute great. Um, uh, ways of learning how to draw and how to yeah. you know how to see shape and 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 what 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 um how shadow forms uh the shape of of of, of something you know how light and dark the contrast between those yeah work. i definitely learned a lot from like just drawing from reference and being super passionate about these people you know when i look back yeah. i'm kind of like embarrassed but <laughs> I was so passionate about it that it like drove me creatively and it yeah. taught me a lot about the relationship between passion and creativity. Yeah. If you, if you because, love what you draw, it, it drives you forward. And even yeah. if you later lose interest, it's still something that you learn a lot from and that like kind of 
is foundational, you know, to the lessons yeah. that you learn. And so drawing these guys that I was in love with was always like a big thing for me in my early yeah. teenage years. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think it, the, the passion is so important when you do yes, art. Absolutely. Like if, if, if you're just doing it, like going through the motions, it's like, ah, what's the reason for doing it? Yeah, you have to have like a kind of obsessiveness sort of, at least in, for me, I don't have that anymore, but like I had that a lot in the early days and it really pushed me to improve. Yeah. So I continued this trend of like, so I went from falling in love with like random celebrity figures and musicians to um, falling in love with like franchises, like or, no, franchise is not the right word, um, like intellectual properties. So yeah. I was really into the matrix. I was into Lord of the Rings. So you see a lot of Lord of the Rings actors here. Um, Faramir, Boromir were my favorites for some reason and the, and the Hobbit. So I've got Dominic Monaghan over there. Um, and then the top left is Keanu, who's really into the matrix. Like really, yeah. that's, that's my first perspective. I drawing. thought that was Nick Cave at first. Yeah. Because of the, the hair, the longer hair has a, a tiny yeah, Nick Cave that's actually vibe there. the background, but it does yeah. actually now that I see that. So I would take the, the photos and I would bring them into Photoshop, desaturate them and amp the levels. And I would use that as my reference photo oh. to get it as realistic as possible because I didn't want to bother too much with the, <laughs> with the color and everything. But then for the, the bottom right of Tobey Maguire from Spider-Man, I kind of I went all out with the color on that one. And I drew all of these on Okaki boards, which is like a really simple kind of software, um, like, like paint almost, mm -hmm. so have like one brush that was a little bit softer. Uh, and that's how I drew all of these. So I was really driven as a teenager by these like, um, I would say like almost obsessions with yeah. like movies or actors and that kind of stuff. But I love the way that all of these feel different in, in, in media, even though it's all digital. But your 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 use of of cross hatching in that uh, David Mona I can't pronounce his Dominic name. Dominic Mona. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then mess that up. Uh, I know. I love him, but I I'm I'm bad at names. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a face kind of girl. Um, and then uh, Spider Man, and you know, it's all it's all very different, and I love seeing that because. You know, you explored your medium to the fullest. Yeah, I'd say, I mean, I didn't really um, like go three dimensional at this time. I was really just trying to like copy what I saw. And I was like, I wanted to, it was like a, sh a shortcut for me. So I did struggle a bit with three dimensionality in my character. Mm -hmm. So I was very good at doing these realistic portraits. But then when I drew like a character from imagination, I couldn't really get the depth because I was sort of looking at it the same way as I was looking at that paint interface copying, like <laughs> pixel by pixel almost. Yeah. Like very yeah. mechanical, like yeah. a human printer. Um, <laughs> all right, so this is another thing in high school that I thought was hilarious. Um, so that for in high school, for our um, like senior year, or well, like junior and senior year art, art studies. So I did IB art, which was like a two year program. And we had to start with a self portrait, but it needed to be like an unconventional self portrait. So I decided to make a little box that represented me. And I decorated it with all these colors that I like. I kind of went all out with the pink and the blue and like, I, I just being, so you. <laughs> yeah, just really extreme, even though I myself never wore these colors, but I liked these colors, right? So I decorated the box with all this stuff and you could open it. And then on the inside were all of these like laminated sheets of printed out paper with like manga drawings that I found on the internet. Uh, and like all of, like all of these things called, from the Okaki board. So uh, I don't know who the original artist is of some of these, the ones that you see at the top with the wink. I, it was just something I found on the internet and I printed it out and then I put it inside this box because it represented my deepest soul, like <laughs> me on the inside. Like oh, that's a big compliment for <laughs> for the artist who's seeing their work now. And it's like, oh. <laughs> I hope that artist. You know, I hope I can find out who made it. Please, it if was, you're the artist, yeah, contact us because we need to meet you. Yes, if you were on the Okaki Circle, because that's where I got it all from. Okaki Circle was an Okaki board. All these French artists would draw on there, and I would like look at the pictures and print them all out. 
and like oh. stick them all over my room and put them inside this box because this box represented me and my I feel soul. I've missed so much, like so much fun. Um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I'm like, I didn't even know what the computer was back then. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was, it was really fun. It was very rock and roll, but it was also like, I think that like I had a chaos of influences come at me. Yeah. And I feel like you had more the, the sort of sp like introspective space to really search for, like you may have had books or something that was a yeah. bit screamy I mean, and chaotic. I went to the library. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I also looked at a lot of books, but I was getting most of my artistic influences from the internet and it was all like scraps here and there. And yeah. that kind of like manifested as chaos in yeah. my style in yeah. the early stages. I think it's um, interesting to see how that works. I mean, uh, two different artists do different ways of uh, like how we grew up with our art. And then, yeah. you know, you went the internet way, computer digital, and I went the traditional. And I was just, I feel that I missed something uh, because I wasn't online or, or uh, digital at an early age. And, um, but, you know, it's, that it's not a, a question of missing something it's different yeah and it's wonderful to see how how we both um evolve yeah i think, yeah, I think that's that it, i think it shows how much context like how you grew up and how you absorbed influences uh impact like how you create and develop your style and it becomes like the story of who you are yeah so, and i love showing that because i think everybody has their own story of how they've definitely and how they like saw the things that they liked and generated meaning from it and, and yeah. that tells your own unique story of how you developed your artistic vision yeah 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 all right definitely. so the next step was vault of shame oh well we've we've already i mean we've already um visited that vault <laughs> <laughs> We started. Oh, so this visit. was the start of the vault. It was the fall. Uh, yeah. Well, right. you know, after the first slide, that was pretty much already the fault of shame. Oh, okay. But so the vault of shame is basically like artwork that we find intensely embarrassing, right? I, to me, this is. For, I find these part of my vault of shame because, uh, and this is this is something I'm I'm I've. I discovered going through all of this, I stopped drawing uh, when I get to, got to art uni. Oh, so right. when I was about 17 or 18 years old, I was 18 when I started going to art school. And when I went there, I was told fantasy is not a thing. Uh, you can't do it. So I was just, you know, it was that, that, that sucked and I wanted to do it at home and I, I still scribbled a little bit and, and some of those sketches in the previous uh, um, slide were from that era. But these are from like that red one. This is, this is by the way, this is definitely um, uh, Elfwood stuff. Um, mm -hmm. This one I did for a friend, an art, online art trade with uh, a friend, David Cornish. And um, that is from 2003. And this is all pretty much around that era. And that's when I finished art school, actually. Oh, okay. um, and and, and the, the, the sad part is I, because I stopped doing my own stuff during art school, because it just wasn't accepted. I, and I feel um, my progression as an artist was halted. And I, I can definitely see that what I'm doing here is just all over the place. And it, there's no, uh, it, it's like I forgot so many things I learned you know yeah so uh, you can you can sense when you look at them that you were feeling stuck at the time yeah not yeah really and, like and, in and, a good and, creative form and it's kind of painful even uh seeing this because i'm seeing somebody who really wanted to and uh, was just you know held back in a way um and you could say that yeah i i i, I kept scribbling things but i didn't uh, put it out you know out there during uni because it I, it was frowned upon, um, and um, when I when I was done with uh, art uni, 
I started doing these kind of things again and and that was the moment I started posting on Alfred and and you know there's there's it it's not good definitely not good I mean my watercolors are I don't think it's bad at all honestly like no, if you were but... showing this to me and you were saying I was really feeling this I was really into these topics and the stuff excited me I would also believe it but I think oh, it's I, you look at it from that perspective of your personal experience. Yeah, I see somebody who's just uh, missed a couple of years and, uh, I, you know, have, has to start over, basically. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm starting over. This is a reboot. Yeah. I do like this one for some reason. I, I love my chubby <laughs> little ladies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's definitely this is, do I feel ashamed seeing these not for these pieces, but for the fact that I stopped uh, pursuing anything. Yeah. I stopped trying. Um, and that's just a shame because I let other people take away what I loved. So that's, that's definitely one of those um, examples of, uh, yeah, that's sad. But, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I see uh, some badass kick-ass women here that's and i i really like that unicorn head <laughs> <laughs> i really i think I, if you remade these that it would be oh yeah really but, cool to see. i mean i'm doing like dryads you can find those in my books in my book anyway and all yeah you know maybe not these creatures but unicorns everything's there yeah and then okay let's let's go to the next one is that the next one? No, no oh i'm sorry i'm being a club oh it's okay it's right. a club uh, this is some of my earlier um oh. um actually my some of my first illustrated projects so things I've i'm done honestly for kind Brian. of like i'm a little offended that you're putting this art in the vault of shame because to me this is incredible like this is amazing what I'm, I'm at. for me this is what i'm seeing here is it's not let's call it the dungeon of despair okay like, i'm not i don't know what i'm doing like i'm okay. trying to find my 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 roots or my footing and and doing things and these are definitely there's a progression here because um this is around 2006 2007 i think this is 2007 this is one of my very first uh illustrated uh projects it's um, beautiful it's, it's yeah thank you it's based on um it's called lauren um for a world called uh talaria i think yeah talaria um and i was asked to do this elven wood that was you know overgrown and there was this one elf just walking and i was very heavy into uh grayscale drawing back then um, so this is this is work that you did yeah this is this is some of my very so first what did you study exactly i studied graphic design okay and then you found work as an as illustrator a yeah i so because at art uni they didn't do fantasy illustration or anything like that and i just didn't want to do the traditional dutch illustration which is kind of you know you know the dutch illustration it's it's kind of very much the same and i don't particularly enjoy it and i didn't want to do that and i didn't want to become an artist mm -hmm. uh you know i didn't want to sell yeah. bullshit <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I, I studied graphic design and then yeah. basically I set out to to find jobs as an illustrator and I began with things like this yeah well doing... that's impressive um it must have been I can imagine that it was very labor intensive to make yeah. that yeah. And, and illustration generally like in the Netherlands illustration book illustration doesn't pay much no no I think I you know maybe 50 euros per illustration if that wow. so you had a high commitment to this yeah you were putting yeah. in a lot of hours mm. and a lot of the stuff i did was for a free magazine like and i i just figured okay let's just do this because i need to um you know find my way i need to yeah. build my name and i didn't you know i didn't know where to begin and let's just do that somebody gave me an uh, opportunity and i took it 
Um, but yeah, there's definitely some some design things that I don't particularly like. Uh, but looking back on how I created that mist, I'm quite happy with that. You know, that's all traditional. That's just yeah. an eraser doing its yeah. job. So you've um, always been a traditional artist yeah. in that sense, right? Yeah, definitely. You so. never got into digital. Uh, oh, girl, we haven't gotten to the digital part yet. <laughs> I have some gems for you. <laughs> And this one is one of my favorites, actually. I, I, she shouldn't actually be in the fault of shame of pit of despair because yeah. here is something where I saw a shift. You know, I was, you know, finding a voice kind of style. I, 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 this particular uh, witch has this mistletoe tied to her head. Um, and she's just chuckling because everybody who is under the mistletoe needs to kiss her. And she has all these tiny hairs here. And that reminded me of my grandmother who always, when she, at her last years, she had these hairs as well and she would always kiss me. And then, um, you know, that reminded me of my grandmother. But this is one of those uh, examples of I'm doing the dark stuff and then the really gruesome Cupid who's sewing the hearts, the broken hearts of the lovers who fell out of love with each other oh wow yeah. it's it's all very deep <laughs> <laughs> and then a book cover that's completely painted and this is the spine and then very nice uh, you know um and that's yeah one of the earlier watercolors which was super difficult um yeah it's not perfect but i still like the marble of that pillar to be honest. And I mean, then, it's impressive to make such a readable uh, cut, like illustration with, with watercolor, with traditional tools. I mean, for me, that would be a huge challenge because I usually move stuff around and uh, change the colors as yeah. I go. And that's, that's not an option when you're working with watercolor. No, no. And also if you're working with acrylic or whatever, you could paint over yeah. the stage. Watercolor is with watercolor. Yeah. It's like unforgiving in that sense. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I'm I'm just having fun here. This is this is definitely some of that work. Two thousand seven. I see a shift in my work um, that I really enjoy. Um, and and you know, I, I keep on going. And then we 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 get to oh, that that wonderful dragon again. A a a, a cover for a, a book and it's not good it's like there's so much wrong in that anatomy but you know i like the clouds it's I think all it's good. traditional <laughs> i think it's impressive it's um as someone who never draws dragons you no, know <laughs> i i didn't draw any dragons but i you know it's not even the dragon that in the, that i i particularly enjoy i i love what's happening in the background with that mist and you know the the architecture is off the perspective is off but i love that suggestion of depth in there which is one of the first things i i i tried and um, i'm quite happy with that actually so these are all and yeah, this is client work where i had to um um illustrate a german novel and just create the characters illustrate the characters like this and with uh, notes and everything and i really love that so um i put that in this fold of despair thingy because it shows how all over the place i was back then um and this this is just a, a good illustration of me being all over the place I don't see it. I well, I do like okay, you're doing Arthurian legend Lady of the Lake, then there's this this oh I'm I I got to show you this. This is this is one of the hilarious things. Okay. Let's I zoom, love that one. Let's zoom in on her. So <laughs> you know she's very cool. She is very cool. She's is that a water to, bottle yeah. that she's got in the front? Yeah. She's racing. She's racing. She, she's racing. She's in a race. She's winning. And I love that her breasts are just hanging there and just flopping away in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
But that's another thing I love. I love humor in, in some of these pieces. And this is 2007 as well. Oh, yeah. So you see, I've, I stopped painting um, after uni. In 2001, I uh, graduated. And then 2002, 2003, I started painting again. And then this is 2006 and seven. So there's a lot of uh, change already in those couple of years of just going from that uh, awkward period of that dry, just not feeling it, and then mm -hmm. doing this, which is already a huge difference. Yep. So for me, this is, yes, this is the vault of shame for me, but it's also the vault of learning and, you know, I'm learning things and I'm, yeah. I'm doing things. So um, very important for me. Yeah. Well, that is essential. I think that, that you have to kind of experiment and when you're experimenting, you're going to have all of these like awkward phases, but it, it's the same as growing as a human, you know, yeah. like as teenagers, we grow awkwardly, but then, you know, it, we develop into adults and it's the same with art style. I'm still growing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that my fault of shame stuff is more truly shameful. Um, I don't believe it. All right. So here's my first sort of vault of shame section, which focuses on my attempts to draw in a manga style. So I discovered this kind of anime manga style, um, sort of shorthand for a variety of styles, of course, but I discovered like this Japanese approach in uh, high school in eighth grade and ninth grade because a good friend of mine was really into it she literally like watched a lot of anime she had a lot of the manga comics and she introduced me to this style and it just felt like something i should be doing i don't know mm. why it just it just felt like the natural next step because i was doing a lot of stuff that was like very realistic you know just copying stuff in front of me and i i wanted to make the jump into drawing stuff from the imagination um, so here's my attempts to kind of draw in that style. And you can see that I'm trying to figure out how those eyes work, you know? So I've got yeah. like the, those eyes and I'm trying to figure out like how many shiny chunks are on that eye. Like how big and shiny does it have to be to feel like... Did you have style? any, like, I know there's all these how to draw manga books and stuff like that. Did you have any of those when you start doing this? Because I can see the construction lines of the face yeah. and... Yeah, I think I googled a how to draw a manga head tutorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seriously just typed it in a search engine and got this whole system of drawing a circle and some constructional lines. But I don't think I was really doing it right because when I look at where the constructional lines are, I'm wondering why I chose those. So <laughs> I didn't really know. I was just trying stuff out. Uh, drawing with a gel pen as well, which I find hilarious. I have like the sparkly gel pens. Yeah. Um, and oh, I included a couple of like really awkward attempts to draw bodies, like the, the sort of creepy princess over here on the side and this like sort of unfinished hunched figure because like I was focusing a lot on the faces but I did not know how to draw the bodies so yeah whenever I did challenge myself it just became kind of stretched out and I got very lost like as soon as I started the hands are always like these confused scribbles basically yeah but there's, a, there's a lot to learn I mean there's, yeah. there's a lot of information the head is one thing but then at the body and and all those appendages and you're like yeah. lost <laughs> Yeah, the big picture was just like very complex to me. So I yeah. knew how to draw from reference, but like this was just so hard. Yeah. Um, and then I I have a, an old Akaki in there as well, like the pink one that was very like, um, just like the, the kind of anime style that I was trying to capture. I think kind of like Dragon Ball Z influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, with very large foreheads and the features all down towards the bottom. Uh, so this is sort of where I was at. Uh, I wasn't sure how to make it work, but I was going there, you know? Yeah. And when I look at the highlighting, I feel the struggle, like how hard this was for me. Uh, yeah, but I, I do, <laughs> the, the, the highlight on that nose and on that cheek and such, I, I do think you're getting there. I mean. It is foundational. Like what I was yeah. doing here is absolutely foundational to the style that I later found. So I was yeah. definitely exploring those little things. Um, next. Oh yeah. So this is a, a step earlier ah. again, 
So this is my vault of shame section because I am super embarrassed of all of my attempts to be funny through my art. So when I was drawing as a 13 year old, 12 year old, uh, 10 year old, like in that phase before I became a super embarrassed teenager, I thought that like, I, I thought I could make people laugh with my art. So I made a lot I of like super awkward cartoons. <laughs> I'm so laughing, they're amazing. I'm like <laughs> What went through your head? I just thought this stuff was hilarious. Like, I think people who know me well, like maybe you know this about me, that I really like very bad, like dad joke type of humor. Yeah. Like, I love it. <laughs> um, but I've always had this, you know, since I was a kid. So th this is some of the art, like on the left side is from my early di computer art, you know, Lois from Marla's computer art booklet. Hey, that's, that's the dog from the first year, from your, your first, first drawing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His his ear is now in the right position, <laughs> and he's he's never felt so confused, confused in his whole life. Whole life. <laughs> so I don't know what I was thinking there, but I think I thought it was funny. I don't know. I just I probably drew a puppy, and then I was like, "Yeah, how can I make this even weirder?" Or I was probably <laughs> drawing a weird background and then added the puppy, and I was like, "How can I make a connection between the two? I have no idea. But I thought this was. I like, love that you you reused him in that top drawing as well. Yeah, he's in there. That's yeah. true. This so I made like a sort of mosaic of all these different textures and, and stock images shoes. and my own art. There's like a car, there's there's like <sighs> weird tiles, like just stuff cut out it. from other drawings. And then I made a wall out of it and then I had the pumpkin like saying, it and saying, saying all yeah. those years of training have finally paid off. And I definitely love the exclamation <laughs> back then, just as many as were needed to get the point across. Oh, man. Um, and then we had to do, like, this is from my history notebook. We had to draw, like, sketches of historical stuff. So I drew a sketch of a knight, and then I couldn't resist adding, who turned the lights off? <laughs> that was hilarious. And then, of course, the kitten. Yep. I posted this one on Twitter the other day too. Um, this enraged cat with a with a very I love the unibrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his unibrow and and also that one whisker that yeah. sort of snapped out of place because he's yeah. losing it. You know that one whisker is the first of many yeah. things that snap. <laughs> um, he's very he took a bite of that uh, out <laughs> of that that tub he's, he's in. Yeah, so that's like that's the he's sort of gold. headspace I was in with. Uh, trying to be funny through my art. Uh, when I look at that, I feel very embarrassed. Like this is very, I don't know. I, I don't know like, what kind of humor I was trying to touch on here. I, I, I was just <laughs> trying to be funny. Um, and here's another one. So I, in the early days, I, I mixed influences like crazy, especially, so these were also drawn when I was 15. And I think it's really funny when I look at my old art, that a lot of the stuff that that really is formative happened when I was around 15. Mm. Um, so like some of my best work and some of my worst work was all created in that year because I was like super inspired and just kind of mixing it all in. It was yeah. like, you know, like a crock pot of just random influences. Uh, and I think this shows really well those influences. So I was really into the Powerpuff Girls. I was on a Powerpuff Girl themed Okaki board and I'm still friends with a lot of those people that I met there. Um, so cool. It was just like a little Powerpuff Girl community and we would draw like Powerpuff OCs and you know like all different twists and different styles of Powerpuff and I got really into Star Wars uh, at the time so episode two had just come out and that's the one where Padme and Anakin yeah. fall in love and um, I watched it later and I was kind of disturbed by the lack of like chemistry between the two but as a teenager I watched it and I was like this is so romantic. And the reason I thought it was romantic is because her dress was so pretty. So this is kind of how I thought at the time. Uh, I was also really into Art Nouveau and I could see the Art Nouveau influence in her dress. Yeah. Uh, I could see that it was like a Art Nouveau take on Star Wars. Uh, so I had to mix it all. I had to add a third influence. So Art Nouveau, Star Wars, and of course, Powerpuff Girls. And then this kind of came out of that. I think it's um, wonderful. Yeah. Well, when I look at it, I'm... I'm kind of embarrassed because I know that like I was really trying to capture ethereal beauty with these. Like I was not doing this as a joke. I, I really thought that like this was a really good way to express the, the transcendent beauty of Padme. I, um, you know, I'm seeing it. 
I'm seeing it. It's, yeah. the, it's the pose. It's like I still everything. like the last one. The last yeah. one works quite well with the loose ribbon. So I was using a lot of like uh, this tool they had an Okaki where you could like vizier lines. So you didn't like draw the line, but you just kind of like constructed it from mm. these angles. Cause I was working with a mouse at the time. So this is all with my ball mouse. So kind of, you had to clean out, you know? You oh yeah. 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 With the fluff. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> so that's what I drew these with. And I thought it was really funny. Cause I, 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 um, I met Ian McCaig a couple times by now at events like Lightbox. And um, he was one of my biggest influences at this time because I saw some of his Padme concept art and it yeah. blew me away. Like, I, I still think the Padme concept art is more beautiful than anything that showed up in the movie because it just has that beautiful, it's just gorgeously yeah. constructed and so poetic. Um, and so I, I was uh, at a dinner with Ian McKay and a bunch of other people and Ian was talking to some other people and I was just like, I need to show him these, you know, he needs to know like the influence that he had. So I went up to him and I, I showed him, I was like, you've inspired me so much. I have to show you my Padme Powerpuff Girls. They're inspired by you. And I think he, I mean, he was very kind in his response. Yeah, that's But <laughs> I think that he was like, oh, interesting. Like, I, don't, I think he didn't really know what to say, but this is truly like, these, these had such a big impact on me, but I'm still very embarrassed of them. Cause when I look at them now, I'm like, why? why Powerpuff? You know, I didn't really think those decisions through. I just did them because I wanted yeah, to. But, it was very impulsive. I mean, you were 15 years old and this was what you were uh, fully immersed in. So yeah. that's, that's, that's totally normal. Yeah. I, I didn't mean. think twice about anything. And that is something that sometimes I genuinely really miss uh, as an, as an adult, as somebody who has to weigh a lot of my decisions, uh, my creative decisions as well, in terms of my career at this time, in my life I really didn't think things through very much at all and it was very freeing it was yeah. just it was very nice I mean that's 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 the beauty of 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 these it's they are truly just because you want them to be yeah and it made and, sense because I just had the idea yeah and I didn't think yeah. any further than that but isn't that just wonderful that you know you you could have that freedom and as soon as you're starting out to to um, pursue a career you have to make decisions and, and everything you do has to be um, well you know um, you have to decide carefully and, and it can be limiting yeah for sure and Very this is limited. the kind of stuff where you learn the most I think yeah yeah definitely well I'm, oh. I'm a fan I want a t-shirt with Powerpuff Padme <laughs> I'll get you one. You better Ooh. wear it. You better oh, wear it. Oh, like yeah. Oh, it's pride. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next category that we had is side quests. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, it's still um, um, the fault of shame continues, but it's side quest ish. And that's, um, you know, let's let's do uh, digital. Oh, yeah, yeah. These are some very never before seen digital pieces of me. And I, you know, I, I discovered certain brushes. Like, yeah. hey, who's going to paint coral? There's, there's a brush for that. Yeah, um, that's the yeah. beauty of digital. I yeah. love that dragon, by the way. Which, uh, this one, yeah. Yes, yeah, I mean, this guy. Is, this is where I, I started just uh, doing uh, sketches and then coloring, di coloring them digitally, which was really, like that's really close to what I'm doing now, but traditionally. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually, this is one of those things I did for schoolism. Um, oh. Bobby used to do these, these, these daily drawings or some kind of um, challenges. And he said- I can see it. It's very Bobby Chew-ish. Uh, I started doing those and you know I love doing that and I and I still love this particular witch <laughs> the Davy Crockett witch <laughs> I love these these things I like I, that's humor and I love how that little raccoon is just hanging on for dear life and that witch is like really satisfied with themselves and then um this is we, we might have to censor that one in the final yeah <laughs> Can you put a, b a bar on top? We might of have to. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's a, a published piece. <laughs> it was published. <laughs> that mermaid as well. I'm trying to not show that particular piece. <laughs> Just 
you know. But I, I, yeah, it's digital. And I think uh, it's pretty good. I, I, I think it looks like you use textures and textured brushes, which is already like a very yeah. natural mix with your style. Yeah, I, I was just trying something and uh, I, I, you know, I'm still very happy with how that dragon scaly thing looks and how that you know i love the 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 looseness of those uh the, those brush strokes there definitely some of my favorite things happening here yeah um, it looks but, good oh yeah and but, you know it's it's again it's it's a sketch and then color digitally um but for me it felt so very off uh, so this was one of my avenues that i tried because i thought people wanted me to do digital because that was um asked called for or asked for and i was seeing a lot of people doing that and i thought i had to do that and um you know that's one of the avenues i explored and this is another avenue i explored and i'm still doing some things like this oh, yeah. um I illustrated a lot of children's books or uh, picture books. Uh, these are yeah. Just this is couple. really different than your than everything so else. Oh, very shown. different. Yeah. Um, and you know, I enjoy doing this, but is it me? Not one hundred percent. Like I, I yeah. There, it's an aspect of me, but it's definitely not what I want to do. Um, and also, like for instance, this book was about emotions and. Um, I had to fight the publisher on everything. Like my kids were from all, you know, all uh, racial backgrounds. There's an Islamic girl there. There's, oh, yeah, I'm having the worst. <laughs> this is the worst. I, you know, snag, snaggle tooth there. And I is that Korean? A uh, Chinese. Oh. I, I believe it's Chinese. So that was translated in China and in oh, France, cool. I think. And, I didn't see a penny of all of that. So that's another oh, wow, reason why really? I hate this. Oh, okay. I didn't, didn't earn a lot of money on these. And then Princess Nina, a, a story about a, a lesbian uh, princess who falls in love with an African princess. And, you know, I'm, I, if you look that one up on Amazon, you'll see me being named as a, a heretic and a Satan worshiper, and you name it, it's me. But aren't you a Satan worshiper, though? I thought I, you were. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I don't even believe in Satan, really. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a construct that I don't believe in. <laughs> and then this is for a history book. Um, oh, very history cool. Stories, and it's again, it's digital um, for an older public, for older, older kids, and then. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, guys, I'm just thought this is technology for you. That's why I'm traditional. <laughs> <laughs> Never does what I want to do. <laughs> well, so I love how sorry. colorful this whole slide is. It's just yeah. so like, you know, I, I, I tried so many things, so many things. Um, and, and that's what I love about being an artist is just trying everything. And, and I know that a lot of people say, yeah, you have to stick with one thing. And I'm like, I'm like, no, you, you have to try and be able to change your mind. Yeah. And that's what you've seen me do is just change my mind continuously. So I wanted to try picture books and our children's books, see if I liked it. And I don't hate it, but do I like it? Eh it's okay doesn't pay very well so like i'm not yeah. spending three months for 1500 euros hell yeah. no that definitely takes the fun out of it, huh? it definitely i guess that's does. also one of the main reasons why this would be a side quest for you is because yeah. it just wasn't that um it didn't yield that that much no. results for your career like it wasn't a, a sustainable no, because in the Netherlands, when you get 1,500 euros for the entire book, that's about three months of work when you're traditional like me and you're spending every single day of the week just working on that. And then yeah. 1,500 euros, that's it. And then you start getting money when the royalties come in, but the royalties don't come in unless the book is a bestseller. And yeah. that never or rarely happens in the Netherlands yeah. uh, for a unique Dutch book. 
but I also do started doing this. This was very done cool. in the similar time, which is completely different. It's very dark. It's it's. This is very like illustration yeah. genre. Like what we saw before was like storybook illustration. Yeah. And this is much more like the kind of stuff you'd see in like Spectrum or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just trying to find my voice really trying to find who I was and I I love all these things like I love the crazy witches and the r really funny stuff like you lo had the funny the, the weird humor I I too have the weird boobs are flying witches and, and <laughs> but I also love uh to paint pa pictures of this is for instance um a, a, a black widow that's beautiful and she is Let's see if I don't fuck this one up. So she's a spider. She's a spider, and that big mm. dress is hiding those legs. You oh my god! That yeah. just seriously gave me goosebumps. Yeah, and then they have these, <laughs> I'm really scared of spiders. So. You have these eyes, and then all these pictures in the back of her late husbands. <laughs> like, I thought I was brilliant. <laughs> Did you paint that border as well? Yeah, yeah, it's wow. all hand painted. So oh, every yes. everything was just hand painted on top of the mat. And you wouldn't be doing this stuff anymore nowadays, or yeah, is I this still, a sort of thing that you would still dip back into? Yeah, definitely, still dip because this is also what I really enjoy. But I'm just, you know, my my this definitely was around 2011, I think 2012, yeah. and I saw myself shifting into a more grown-up style, maybe more gallery kind of stuff. Um, and how did you generate income from this sort of stuff? Did you sell I, prints I didn't. of it? Oh, you didn't. didn't. This is purely for passion. So you didn't this sell was... prints, or you didn't sell no, the originals. No, no, no. I, I sold sketchbooks, for instance. Oh, okay. I, I went to Elixcon and sold these originals. So that's that yeah. one sold. That one sold. That one sold. That one I... sold. This I can't sell because my husband loves it. Uh -huh, it's, yeah. it's the misfortune teller. Oh um, gosh. I mean, there's a story behind that. And yeah. Like. Yeah, they're very, so very like detailed dense uh, and very storytelling kind of images yeah yeah and it's it they're, they're kind of gruesome but yeah not i i don't think they're gruesome I, I don't think they're scary but other people look at these and like oh that's that's nasty that's <laughs> horror and that's you know that's what i started discovering that i love doing things that could be scary to some and beautiful to others yeah and that's what I find interesting. And that's the, I, I started finding that balance here. And even with, this is one of the first sculpts I did. It's beautiful. And that's part of that piece. And, and you know, I love that haunting look of that woman just peering at you. And uh, for me, that's beauty. And other people are just haunted by those, uh, those empty eyes. And, and, you know, this is my, Marie Antoinette and that's it's based on an official picture of Marie Antoinette actually with her dress like that and you know in in that era they had these wigs where with boats in it and stuff like that so I thought it was funny <laughs> to create her hair as the Kraken and just dragging <laughs> that ship down and then she's holding a bone because that's from all the people she killed and stuff i thought it was funny i like I, it too i still think it's funny i always feel like these could be um like i, I went to the harry potter experience in yeah. london and you have like all those paintings and they were like real paintings that they found yeah. in thrift shops and modified to make it look magical and i feel like these are the kind of paintings you would see on the wall in a movie where it just gives like this essential backstory but you only catch a glimpse of it and like, and then later you find out the true story behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It has so like cool. a film, a film-like quality to it. Yeah. Yeah, and I, th I think it's fun to show this because there's, there's just a couple of years between these and those first ones after uni. Yeah. It's not a lot of time between those, but you can see that I just 
went for it and, and stuck with it and just, you know, I want to make this, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. And I still, I didn't know exactly what it was I wanted to do. If it was gallery shows or, you know, spectrum worthy art yeah. or work for magic or, you know, all that kind of stuff do children's books. And because I didn't know, I just decided to do everything and, and figure out what I wanted to do. Um, which is difficult, of course, because yeah. you're very fragmented and it's they're very difficult to then find yeah. what you do. And it's a risk because if you are doing something you like yeah, and then just seeing where you go from there, then you don't really know how you're going to make a living off of it. No. Like It's not really a strategy for income, no. uh, even though it could yield something. You don't know for sure. Yeah. No. But I didn't need to yield an income. I had a steady job. I was working as a graphic right. designer. So for me, it was never about an income. It was just, I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to have my work on show at a gallery show or yeah. something like that. Or okay, so, this, so having the steady income gave you the freedom on the side yeah. to kind of explore or different To things. do all of this. So yeah. for me, it's... I always say like there, there, there seems to be this, this stigma of you, know, you have to work as an artist immediately. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it, it takes a bit more work and more time, but you can, there's, there's something to say about having that day job to support you and pay your bills and yeah. just to, to take that time and that freedom to explore and do whatever the hell you want to do. Yeah, I think that, a lot of pressure. artists have that situation where they have to get their steady income from a different yeah. job and then they have to um, kind of do their own thing on the side. And I, I, I think for a lot of people, that's, a, that's something that is like, there's, there's so much benefits that can be had from this situation. There's also a lot of downsides to yeah. it. But, but having like, uh, like a lot of people are forced into that position. There's a lot you can get out of it. It doesn't mean that you can't like grow creatively. Yeah, but uh, this is this is just one of those examples of because um, when people look at me now and see what I'm doing now, and I think you have the same thing, is they see where you are now, your success, yeah. and they want that. How did you get that? And they want to try that. But what works for me doesn't have to work for you. You have yeah. to figure out what works for you. And leave um, some space to do what you really love and see what yeah. can grow out of that. Because yeah. if you try to reverse engineer it and like kind of adapt your creative work to what you think is the right career path, you might be throwing out some stuff that are, you're really passionate about, right? Yeah. And you have to keep cultivating that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show my... Um, side quests. And my first side quest is furry art, or as we called them at the time, anthros. And for a long time, I drew these kind of like half animal, half people characters. Um, I never went like full furry and gave them like a snout or anything. I kept like the human face for the most part, but I added like animal ears and animal tails and fur and like funky colors. I love and your Care Bear. Yeah, I, I was looking at that Care Bear and I was like, how do the hands work? You know yeah. what I mean? Because they're yeah. like huge mittens with no loose fingers. But um, I didn't really think that one through. I just thought like, I don't know. And I don't really know like what I was really going for in terms of like sexiness. But I can mm. see that I'm trying to get these characters to be sexy. But like, I just didn't really know how like that would work exactly like were they mostly cute or were they attractive or whatever I think I was just playing around um with the colors mostly and I think it's funny when I look at these because I kind of ditched this stuff like hard turn away from it uh when I went to animation school mm. um because I quickly picked up on the fact that this stuff was ridiculed <laughs> yeah and, like no one liked it um but I always kind of kept parts of it in my style I think I think my current style still has this um chunkiness to it yeah. that i first explored with these anthro slash furry characters and also a colorful aspect to it yeah yeah um because i loved exploring color and i loved looking at them as a way of like expressing style um and you could really push the style further if they were like half animal half human um and on the left you can see my character no girl who i still draw quite frequently so now she's like a human but back then she was like a gray uh cat-like furry um 
which was a lot of fun to draw. And I can see like as well when I look at this, how influenced I was by My Little Pony and that kind of stuff. So like 80s toys. Yeah, yeah. Um, the it's hair. Definitely the color, yeah. Yeah, I loved, I was very nostalgic when I was drawing these. Um, so this was like a thing I was really into, um, but like kind of moved away from after a while. This is some artwork from my first year in animation school. And there's sort of a backstory to this. So I uh, showed up to the entrance exam with like, you know, this kind of stuff. And they were like, they could see that I had technical skill, yeah. but they hated this. And they literally said like, we never want to see this again. So you're accepted, but you cannot draw this stuff mm -hmm. anymore. And um, I was like, okay, well, I can handle that. But I really couldn't. Uh, so it was really hard for me to like have to throw away everything I liked. And it wasn't really, it was hard for me to understand what did, what did they want to see? If I wasn't yeah. going to make like super colorful stuff, what did they want to see? And that was really hard to read. And I think there was a lot of um, culture clash happening as well because I'm Dutch and, and Dutch people put a very high emphasis on clear communication and sometimes are so blunt that they're considered extremely rude. But as long as you're honest, you know, that's the most important yeah. thing. <laughs> and I did my first year of college in Belgium at a school yeah. called Gosk. And there they were, Belgians don't, I think, put the same value on honesty. They are much more um, subtle, much more indirect. They consider the Dutch way of communicating to be extremely rude and overwhelming. Yeah. Um, but I found because of that, and I also spoke a lot of English rather than Dutch. My Dutch wasn't great because I was living outside of the Netherlands for much of my childhood. Um, and I really struggled to communicate with them, like language-wise, but also culture-wise. So I just didn't really know what they wanted from me, but I could feel their disapproval, right? So yeah. I uh, tried to adapt to what they wanted to see. And they really liked, they liked gags and jokes that kind of like at the expense of someone. Yep. Uh, they liked caricatures. They liked sketches that were like intentionally kind of ugly. They liked stuff that emphasized weirdness and quirks. And my art was the total opposite. Like everything mm -hmm. I was drawing before that was like just this, just because it was pretty and because it was cute and fun and they did not like that. So I tried for much of the year to adapt. And I remember when I made this storyboard here on the left side, it's like a really weird story showing like these sort of weird old people like frying on the beach. And there's like some kind of scale joke to it that in the end, like there's all these like weird um, like seagulls flying around them. But then it turns out that they're actually really small and she like swats it to death with a fly. I don't really understand what the joke was. They were really <laughs> into this though. They were like, this is great. You finally found it, you know? We're gonna love this. This is gonna be awesome. And um, the kind of sketches you see on the right side also got pretty good feedback from them. And I personally, like, just, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't understand it. I didn't. I don't see with you it. in it. Like, I, yeah, there's more of a um, Carter Goodrich vibe to it. Like that yeah. lady. There, it, it's definitely not Lois. There's. Yeah, it wasn't know, me at all. You lost it, yourself here. Yeah, definitely. Basically, what happened to me happened to you as well. Yeah, and I felt very like proud for like yeah. a minute that I had finally achieved something they liked, and then yeah. I instantly was like, I can't do this anymore. And I literally yeah. one day, this is something that I have to emphasize. I was extremely privileged in being able to do this because um, uh, art school in Belgium for Dutch citizens and also Dutch art school was very affordable at the time. So I just one day just didn't come back. I just went home to my mom's and I just, uh, cause she lived in Brussels. It was like about half an hour with the train and I got there and I just didn't go back. I was like, I just, I just don't want to. And I, it wasn't even a conscious choice. I just physically couldn't, you mm -hmm. know, if I had to get up and go back to school, yeah. I just couldn't. So I just, I mean, I, I understand that because basically they, they killed what was you. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what it felt like for sure. <laughs> okay. But actually, I killed what was me. Yeah, you I let didn't them. defend. Like, yeah, I you let you let them. Yeah, and I didn't understand why I wasn't comfortable in this stuff. Yeah. So I felt yeah. very guilty because the stuff that I drew before was super girly. And I could notice that people did not like girly. They thought that girly was like for babies. And yeah. now that I'm older, I can see that there's a lot of sexism to that. Uh, there was a lot of like oh, this is too, um, you know, because there, there are a lot of, like, uh, male students who also made very, you know, simple art that didn't have a deeper level, but because it wasn't, like, extremely disgustingly feminine, they didn't really have as much of a problem with it, you know, so there was a lot of, like, layers yeah. of um, things going on, but I, honestly, I really didn't know how to defend what I wanted to do, so I just... Like I, the only thing I could think of was to just literally flee and never. How show old again. were you? How old were you? Uh, I was nineteen. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's recogn I recognize this because I was eighteen when I went to art school. So nineteen when I had to choose a a, a, a course of what I wanted to do, and this is so so similar. Yeah, you're yeah. very vulnerable at that age. I oh, think. you're it's so because you don't have yourself. a clue what you're doing. Yeah. You don't have a clue what you're doing. You're thinking, okay, I'm going to art school. I'm going to animation school. This is it. This is this is it. This is going to learn how to be an artist. Yeah. And you're not. You're you're getting just the, some tools, but it's yeah. definitely not the only way. Yeah, and especially if there's a lot of communication like miscommunication, yeah. it's almost like not worth it, you know? And that's yeah. something that looking back, I could see that like, I was really wasting my time and my money by going to that school because it just wasn't the place where I would be able to learn the communication mm. skills needed, you know, to get into the work field. I think yeah. for others, it would have been the right place. But for yeah. me personally, just the click wasn't there. The communication style wasn't natural for me. But um, nowadays but you don't so have to go. Yeah. You, yeah nowadays, nowadays you don't have to go. And there are a lot so of people many. who share their negative experiences about art school. And I think if that had been more of like an openly discussed yeah. topic at the time, I would have felt less like uh, I was doing something wrong and yeah. identified more like no, it's just the, the lack of connection, like no click. Yeah, doesn't. the Institute doesn't really, back then, didn't really, um, you know, clicked. They didn't fit. The, the what you know how do you say that it didn't fit um, the 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 help me out here i'm 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 dying here well, what people wanted to do <laughs> yeah what what people wanted to do or what the industry fit, was doing didn't fit the industry it was just yeah. i felt very, very much felt like you had to be an artist yeah, as in I had, just yeah. throw some art, throw some paint on that canvas look at it and call it art yeah, yeah, and just and have a really bullshit story. See, they didn't see that there was like a career that could be built on yeah. making kind of fan art type of stuff. Yeah, like definitely. now you see that a lot, but back then that was like not. Yeah, and I think internet has a big, big chunk in this that the the, the way of learning has changed significantly, and then you have mm -hmm. schoolism and all these online art skills that are affordable you don't have to go to a very expensive art university to learn these things exactly um, so and you can learn them in an environment that's less like yeah. all-encompassing because yeah. being away from home being out you know like it's living tough. on my own in a different country it was very alienating yeah um and this is the last thing that's sort of about um oh no 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 this is for the next part and the next part is Ooh. Ooh. Turning points. Turning points. Now point. it's your turn to do. Oh yeah, that's the okay. last section we're going into. What th this is this is long. It is. <laughs> We've got. Everybody still sticking around by this time. Like kudos to you for listening to us. <laughs> like oh man, well my turning points were things like this. Um, at tw in 2016, I completely. Uh, felt like a, a failure and uh, I didn't get any jobs and, and, and I wasn't doing, I wasn't being fulfilled by what I was doing. You know, I, I was doing all these, these children's books and stuff like that. And it just, it, it was like, oh, all of this was, meh, you know, it wasn't, I didn't feel it. And um, 
yeah, I decided to just go back to sketching, like way back, and uh, used the prompt mermaid that I saw on Instagram. I started drawing these weird mermaids, and pages and pages and pages and pages were filled with just weird mermaids, and and I found my way back to to what I love doing, and I saw my my style or my the way I drew. Uh, evolve from there and that was quite quickly actually that really went really uh, just you know in a couple of months I just clicked. found it clicked it completely yeah. clicked and then the big click was was that image on the left that that green man I was painting that one it was June and you know June fate and at that point, I, I had stopped painting fairies for many years, many, many years. And I, you know, I didn't want to draw fairies anymore because every time I said that I was a fantasy artist in the Netherlands, somebody would come up to me and say, oh, you paint fairies? And they thought I would do the sparkly, stripy pants, but fairies and stuff like that. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, no, I don't, unless they're boiled. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I wasn't planning on doing fairies, but you know, the fairies had other plans with me. And that image on the left was one of the first ones that I painted where everything just clicked. I felt my medium was, was you know, I felt comfortable with my medium. I felt comfortable with the, the, the storytelling, the narrative in that piece. And all of a sudden, one after the other just came tumbling on the paper and it's literally you know gushing on the paper because I just have to, what you see here is just that's one page of my 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 sketchbook yeah that so is, every idea you put down generated more ideas yes and the ultimate was, creative flow yeah I was back to that like almost visually dumping things in my sketchbook and, and just going for it. Just, you know, uh, asking myself questions about ah, profiles, interesting profiles. I saw something, I saw a, a goat's uh, horn and, and just, you know, how, how does that work? And how can I incorporate that into a face and how, and, and one thing led to the other. And this is, this is pretty much what happened and and that this is 2016 so in this very very short time where i was just scrambling to find jobs and just all over the place and not feeling any of it and just thinking okay this this whole idea of being an artist is just you know failed uh again can't do it we'll never do it um i was how old was I? I think 37 or something. And I felt like a complete loser because, you know, in the, in the art world and especially nowadays, it's perpetuated that you have to be somewhere before you're 25, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and you have was, to have a style and yes. you have to know exactly what you like to do. And when I was 37 young. and I wasn't doing anything significant. I, I had jobs, the old job here and there, but it was like, yeah, okay, I'm doing this. Um, wasn't making any money. And all of a sudden I found this and I had so much fun painting this. I had so freaking much fun with this. And the only reason I was doing it is because I wanted to do it. And there was no other reason. I was not interested in if people liked it yes of course i loved it when people liked it i loved hearing all those. you got a lot of positive response on this so many and i think it's because people could tell that you were enjoying yourself yeah so it yeah. wasn't really about trying to please your audience but much no. more about like connecting with them on the level of enjoyment like yeah and and being in a good creative flow which people can really sense i was definitely not interested in um you know making money or or creating something to leave a mark or anything i wasn't going for the high high end or um uh, how do you call that like i wasn't planning on anything i just wanted to tell stories and just yeah. let people enjoy something yeah. and uh, you know they did and and that was 
just freaking amazing. And all of a sudden I, I felt so comfortable with what I was doing. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty much where anything led to what I'm doing now. And yeah. um, this is what I'm still doing. I'm creating uh, this. This is me. This is me having fun. This is me still filling page after page after page with ideas and sketches and stories. And you know, I'll I'll pick one of those out and just render it or paint it. And um, you know, even even like things like this, like. I can show you like this little dude here. That's just a scribble to many. I like how your work has gotten more, almost, I would say, um, like more simple in its concept. Yeah. Like that you were doing much more complex pieces, trying to integrate a lot of different things yeah. earlier on. And now you're much more like just coming from a simple idea Yeah, and just letting that flow. I, I, I find it more important to just leave things open. Yeah. I think art that's open is more interesting. Like it leaves something to the imagination of the people who are viewing the piece. Cause I tried so hard explaining everything and it just falls on deaf ears. You know, yeah. nobody understands what, because I'm not there to tell them the story. Yeah. Um, whereas what I'm doing now is much more like it gives a hint of a story, a hint of an idea. And I leave it up to the viewer to finalize their version of that story. So uh, for me, that's then the art becomes a life uh, yeah. and it lives on and not just with me, but with everybody who watches it. So yeah, that that's, you know, that is just, that's just 2016, 2017 was the eye opener. This book happened, Fairies yeah. of the Fault Lines, that new, new edition of that one is coming out next year. But, you know, I'm still doing whatever I want to do. I'm still making sculpts because I want to do that and I have fun with it. And I feel that when I'm doing three dimensional stuff, it informs my two dimensional stuff as well. Yeah. Um, but I've given up on, on digital, for instance. I just, I don't have that connection with digital. I need my paints. I need to feel, uh, I need to touch my paper. I need to have that connection with my surface and I have to get, get that connection with the paint. And it's tough sometimes because yes, I've painted some pieces when I have a deadline of a week and um, I've, I've painted pieces five, six times in a row just to get something right. Um, whereas if I did that digital, that would be easy. Yeah. Um, but I but it, it allows your creativity to thrive. So it works. Yeah. Really and I, I, you know, I'm, and I, I don't, you know, I don't want to fight my pieces. I just want to, I, it, it feels like communicating. It feels like a very much a symbiosis of me and the piece and the paper and it, the concept and, and all my materials just working together to tell a story. And I think mm -hmm. that in a sense is the magic of the art. And, and that's what I feel is happening. Uh, for me personally here and you know it makes me come extremely happy to see these and it's fun to see because these are some of the older pieces and I still just just love them I'm sorry I love them <laughs> I feel very happy with these yeah this is younger stuff um but yeah this is what happened you know this is yeah. all these uh fairies and and stuff and but again there is darkness in there still so yeah. the horror darkness elements are still there. It's still, yeah, it's not per se cute and cuddly. There is, there's edges. And I love that in my art, that those edges, you know? I um, think that by exploring all the different things that you looked into and all those side quests and trying different techniques that you found, like you kind of threw all the ingredients yeah. together and it was chaos. Yeah. But then you knew exactly which ones to take out for that it's, natural flow. Yeah, it's, it's like elimination. Yeah. You have to know what you're eliminating from. Yeah, and, and I hate, 
I hate regret. I hate not knowing something. I hate not having tried something and like the what ifs. I want yeah. to know if something is for me. Yeah. So I want to try new things and I don't, you know, if, if I've done something, I'm like, okay, I, I've done this. I don't like it. I'm moving on. It's like yeah. going on a roller coaster, just being bad shit. <laughs> like thinking, oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. This is nothing for me. And then, you know, you've done it. Yeah. You tried it, you know, it's not for you. Move on. Next thing. Yeah. There's no what is, there's no regrets. And then, you know, all of that just it, accumulated into client work such as this like i started working for magic magic a wizards of the coast came to me to ask if i wanted to work for them and and this is my very first card which is now up for nomination no it's nominated for a chesley award which is congratulations you know, i mean i know i don't win awards <laughs> yes, I won one award when I was like 10 years old with a Punica, a drink Punica Oase. Oh, wow. Yeah, I won a Sega Mega Drive. I still That's have it. That's pretty awesome. I know, right? That's wow. the best. Like if the Chesley Awards has a Sega Mega Drive, I'm down for it. Anyway, uh, but yeah, magic came. And then all of a sudden to make the circle round again, I just did the Dark Crystal Bestiary, which comes out next month um and i was you know brian froud himself asked if i wanted to do this book and you know it's amazing you tell my have seven to years. send him you have to send him those first sketches now <laughs> i'm i'm going to show him in person i, I want to see his face because yeah He's, he's gonna be, do that. He's now. gonna be brutal yeah. but with a with a wink. He's gonna be brutal with a wink. I know. Imagine telling that to your like eight year old self that you're gonna become a professional artist for the very yeah. the very artist that inspired you. I mean, I was such such a big fan of him and Alan, by the way, when I was at that age. Like I idolized them. Yeah. And uh, you know, now they're friends. Yeah. Amazing. And I've done this. I've and and all of that just came from you know trying all these things, making all these mistakes, and then just finding what made me feel comfortable. And like, if I look at that ogre, she is not perfect, but I love the balance of detail and looseness and that's definitely where i found my my strength it's yeah just... i think that that's definitely what shows the most in your progression is that you yeah. found your click when you went rougher yeah when you went more loose and then and that's where you found like your strength yeah and, and you know that being comfortable with uh not being perfect yeah and that's so important and just being comfortable with being whoever you are as an artist and you don't have to be like anybody else and you don't you know you don't have to do digital if it's not your cup of tea yeah uh, and 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 you know then whatever else everybody else is saying just make sure that you're as quick as everybody else i mean this there's no digital enhancement other than value change you know in color photoshop but yeah. there's nothing that light is just freaking paint it's traditional paint it's <laughs> not a photoshop filter thingy and i'm doing it congratulations <laughs> sorry <laughs> but, you know I'm, I'm like yeah i made all right. it all right let's wrap it up let's yes, i'm gonna you. do my my final part um let's see Share. right um and so this is a slide this for me was a turning point in the sense that um so like it's like each column sort of led to the next column led to the final column and this was my uh sort of transition from the anime influence stuff into like what i consider to be the earliest examples of my own style yeah um so the ones on the left are like super inspired by the anime style and are definitely like trying to do things that i saw somewhere else but not really feeling it not really understanding it so well and then in the middle you can kind of see that like i'm toning it down a little bit with the anime mm. slightly fewer eyelashes maybe the proportions change a little bit and then by the last step 
So these were truly like the top right one is the first drawing that I ever made where uh, the, it was on an Akaki board and the comments that I got on it were like, we love your style. And I was like, I have a style. I had no idea. <laughs> like I, I didn't think I had one. Uh, and those were the first times that I drew like a kind of character in a way, yeah. with a kind of expression that I was like, this captures what I'm trying to do with these yeah. girls. Like I want them to look to like have a kind of warmth to them, a kind of cuteness to them. And with the anime stuff, I felt like it was sort of a shield, you know, it was like yeah. keeping you away from the character. And when I there's less towards... personality in them. In yeah, the because I'm much yeah. more like imitating something that yeah. somebody else has mastered, and I hadn't found my own way in that. Yeah. So by the last column, I felt I had found my own way, and I still feel like the faces that I draw, even though they're quite different from these faces, I feel like they have the same essence. They have the yeah. same kind of like maybe basic structure and feeling to them. Um, but those were the first drawings where I made that and I felt like I was getting, like, I didn't even know that I had landed on it until other people were saying like, oh, that's, that's Lois, she has a certain style. And I was like, okay, I guess I have a certain style. Bizarre. Um, and then this, is, this was my attempt to work towards something painterly. Oh, wow. So on the left side are all of my attempts to to make painterly kind of stuff in the program Painter. Cause I thought mm. that I couldn't do that in Photoshop. I thought that like I needed to have a special kind of brush, which is like, I think something that all beginners struggle oh, with yeah. and think that like, uh, What's your oh, brush? I need, what brush yeah, are you using? I need <laughs> that brush cause then I can get that effect. And I didn't know how to get the effect um, in my workflow. So I was drawing all of these kind of like blended brownish, like monochromatic, characters um trying to get like some detail in in the faces but it, it was so hard and a lot of these sketches had like curse words written next to them because i just <laughs> couldn't get it to work you know i was so frustrated i was like oh i can nail this painterly look and then i draw it and be like this is, <laughs> this is totally not what i'm trying to do um and then the drawing on the right is an akaki that i drew and that was one of the first drawings that i ever made where i realized like it's not about the brush, it's about the way that you blend. And I had a mental switch where I started yeah. to think of the colors as like a kind of clay. And I started thinking of color as sculpting mm -hmm. um, rather than, um, you know, like mimicking an effect from the outside. And so I started thinking about the shape of the arm and the collarbones, which are like super extreme, but I was like pushing it because I was sort of trying to bring out the shape with, with uh, light and shadow. And I went kind of all out with this and just painted all over it. And you, you, you saw in my earlier art that cross hatching was a thing for me. And I sort of found out how to translate the cross hatching to blending yeah. color and that that would help me get the more painterly style. I love that nose by the way. <laughs> It's, it's very like extreme. <laughs> it's very pointy. I yeah, but I love though the, you know the shadow that that you know the redness. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I've always had a fascination with like like from the very earliest steps of trying to get this um, manga style down, which later became more semi-realistic. I wanted to get the form down. Like I didn't want to just have it look a certain way. I wanted to get the shapes right so that yeah. it could feel three dimensional. And that was like my yeah. main struggle early on. And that's why noses have always been a thing for me because I always wanted to show that the nose is like sticking out and it's not just like two dots on the face, but that <laughs> it has a form, you know? And, yeah. and I think a lot of early on, I got a lot of comments from people saying like, I love how you draw like real women with real curves, which is like something that now I'm always like, well, yeah what's a real woman, like, let's yeah. not get into that. Um, let's not judge what a real woman is. But uh, I get why they said that. I think because I was really trying to get the shape. I was like really focused on getting the three dimensionality. Whereas in a lot of like similar styles at that time in 2004, 2003, like skinniness was like really a thing. Like yeah. everyone was very thin or wanted to be very thin and like nowadays you have like thick is like a positive thing to say but in 2003 that was like horrendous like you had these actresses who are like celebrated for being more curvy and i would look yeah. at them and be like they're not curvy 
they're literally like just maybe five pounds heavier than <laughs> Paris Hilton. You know, there was like not a lot of um, appreciation for like the thickness of a character. Yeah. And I always wanted to capture that, like, yeah. I don't know, because it made them feel more real. So that's what was my obsession with painterliness. Um, and this is my final slide. These are some of the drawings that I made that like, I, I felt like I had finally figured something out. Um, mm. So f the one on the left is like a pixelated drawing from Akaki. And what I learned when I was drawing that is that if you keep the colors in a similar color range, you can like go in all directions, as long as you like stay in the range of that first color. So I went for like these earthy tones and then I added some greens, I added some yellows, I added some pinks, I added some reds. And then I realized like, as long as you stay in a similar range and kind of like go uh, stray out from there, but not too far. And then you have that one accent that, that catches the eye, then the colors can really work, you know? Yeah. And you can, yeah. you can get really adventurous with the shadows and the highlights, as long as they're similar. Um, and in these shadows, I added a lot of color to them as well, like some green tones and some desaturated tones. and and that's where I really learned the basic principles that I still use all the time in my art, which is like, yeah. don't just use lighter version of the base color, darker version of the base color, but get adventurous with the colors that you add and, and be playful with them. And so this Okaki is one of the first times that I really felt like I had found that and I could really explore the colors. Um, the one in the middle was one of my first popular drawings on DeviantArt. And that's the first time that I learned that like, if I, add a little bit of like a lighter gray in the shadows that it feels much more 3D. Mm -hmm. And when I drew this character, like I really felt that she was like, I could picture her as like a figurine or something. Yeah. Had yeah. That three dimensional feel. She does. And, and the proportions, like these small shoulders and then like giant feet. Um, when I drew this, I was like, I got this. Like I figured out something that I really like, you know, oh, this, this is, you know, this goes back to your furries. I mean, yeah. You know? Only these are humans. Yeah, exactly. This has the furry element yeah, to it definitely. for sure. Yeah. And so you found your way back. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and the one on the right is like the first time that I, I was, I had this thing where I would draw the lines and then color in the lines, which is what I have in the middle one as well. Like mm -hmm. just color them in, maybe change the color of the lines in some areas, but stick to the line work. And I spent a lot of time on line art and, uh, because of that and it took a, a lot of time it was just super time consuming and the least interesting part of the creative process because i i loved sketching i loved adding the color but the, making the line work was just really really time consuming and boring um my hand just wasn't that steady and it, it just wasn't my thing so the painting on the right i was i was sort of coloring her in and then i realized like maybe i should change the lines a little bit here and then i just made a new layer on top and just kind of started painting over it and then I just didn't stop. I was like, wait, I could also paint over the lines here and I could paint over there and I could actually change her face by painting over the whole thing. And then I realized like, I don't need to stick to the line work anymore. When I paint over the line work, it just feels much more sculpted. It has yeah. that feeling that I want. Um, so this was the first time that I started painting over the lines and that's from there, it was just straight into what I have now, which is like, I make a sketch, I add the color and then I just paint from there. I completely skip the line work part. I'm just, I just cut it out. Yeah. And now that's one of my main recommendations when I give my workshop on my workflow is like, if there's a part that's, that's slow, that that's holding you back and that just feels like work, what happens if you just don't do that part? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like maybe, I, you know, if there's people who hate working in color and it's like, yeah, but what if you just do black and white stuff, you know, like yeah. maybe that'll free you. Maybe yeah. that's the little thing you need to do to like, what you had, like, yeah. just keep just working rough and loose, you know, maybe yeah. that's the clip. Uh, your, your style with that, like you, you, you work with your sketch and then you, you put the base colors on there and you paint from there. It's basically what I do. I paint on yeah. top of my graphite sketches and, and, and just work for that. And I, from there and I paint, I sketch with my watercolors on top of a sketch. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very It's just similar. much more intuitive. You can just go straight. It goes, and, and, it feels much more like it just comes yeah. from the mind and yeah. 
onto well, the screen or page. If you if you have to transfer your your piece, and that's the part I hate, you know, is is transferring your sketch, your initial sketch, to the pa the paper you're going to paint on. You always lose some of that. Um, the spontaneity of those lines and yes. that's what i don't like um uh, with with some some of the art um so so it's it's fun to see that it's a very similar work style or work um ethic is that work ethic Work. Eth I'd say workflow. Work maybe fl workflow. Yeah. You've got the word. <laughs> I am. I'm. You know. I'm. I'm the Dumbo here. <laughs> um, no. But uh, we've just been talking for like three hours. Oh, we that have. always has an effect. <laughs> like, and, and, and people are, are people still listening. <laughs> I think everybody dipped out by now. We we can we can break this up in in three sections. One yeah. section each day of light box. Yeah. Chapters. Life so <laughs> but anyway, that, I, I do think there's there's similarities, even yeah. though the medium is completely different. Our yeah. workflows are very similar. Yeah, in it's sense. intuitive, intuitive yeah. workflow. And that's what and I always recommend. It's just a different medium and whatever yeah. medium you prefer to work with, it's, it's perfect. If you can, yeah. you know, if you can express your uh, meaning or you to tell your story in a certain medium best way use it yeah. use it go yeah, with it and, and find the intuitive workflow that fits with yeah. you like yeah. everybody like if, if there's any part that's holding you back you could reevaluate how necessary it is and then yeah. find a workflow for you because i know that there's some people who love to who are like absolute at their strongest when they stick to just inks for example yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it's like you have to unlock that creativity by letting go, uh, shedding out the stuff that isn't helping you. That isn't yeah, feeding and that, your creativity. That's why all these are questions about what brush are you using, what paper are you using, what yeah. pigments are you using. All that information, I get the questions. I understand why you're asking these questions because I asked these questions as well in the beginning, too, thinking yeah. that those things were the magic ingredient, but it's not. No, because it's much more like it's 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 just a thing that's in your hand yeah. and that that comes out like it for me searching for that painterly effect yeah. just took a lot of time just took a lot of time to cultivate and then at some point it Same. just became more natural yeah and 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 it's just um all these things are tools and we each use them in a different way uh so so it's it's it like everything just you know try everything try <sighs> Just yes. figure out what works for you. And like yes. you said, cut out what doesn't work. Don't focus exactly. on that. If if you like to work, I don't know what all these brushes in Photoshop are called. I'm sorry. I just, I don't do digital. Well, I only <laughs> use like one brush all the time and it's just See? a round brush. <laughs> okay. So to wrap it up, we each have a tip that we can give. Two weeks. And my main tip, I think we've given a lot of advice already. Along yeah. The way. But my main tip that I want to give anyone who made it this far into the stream is to indulge in your guilty pleasure. That's, that's truly my main advice. Like you have something that you love to draw and maybe because of like what other people say around you or what teachers have said to you or parents or whatever, you kind of feel like it's embarrassing or silly. Um, and we also talked about our own art during this live stream, like, oh, you know, this is very embarrassing. Um, but, you know, there's actually, it's not, because you just shouldn't feel any shame over stuff that you enjoyed doing. And you have to keep a little part of your artistic practice that is, like, just for you and that you do just because you love it. And uh, you, you can't throw it all away because there's, like, some gatekeeping in the art community about what is and isn't acceptable kind of genres or types of art. So I always say, don't ignore your guilty pleasure. Keep it as your artistic safe place. Don't let it go. You might have to put it aside for a little bit because you have a different focus for a while, but keep keep holding on to it like, and, and indulge in your guilty pleasure every now and then. Yeah, yeah, good tip. Um, yeah. Um, for me it's it's definitely I've, I've said this before say it again try everything try as many things you want to try and just you know indulge yourself you know uh figure out what works for you uh, sketch a lot sketch often uh all those those 
um, excuses of I haven't got time. Well, you sit on the toilet. That's that's five minutes a day, ten minutes a day, whatever. Have a sketchbook there. Sketch. Um, <laughs> You know, don't be afraid of making mistakes. I, I, so many people are so afraid of making mistakes and, and just not, you know, they want to create that perfect image and it doesn't exist. I hate to say it to you, but it won't be perfect. No, nothing you create will be perfect. It will never be what you have in mind and each and every one, uh, every piece you create will be the next perfect piece. Yeah. Um, so, you know, embrace all those mistakes and they, they are the source of your learning. Uh, you learn more, more from those mistakes than you'll ever learn from, from, from your successes, I think. Uh, yeah. And there's no such thing as a mistake really no, in art. No. It's much more like you can look at it from a certain point of view and, and think about whether it was what you were trying to achieve. But even then, like other people can see beauty in it. Where you yeah, don't. I mean, look at what we've shown you, and all those those embar embarrassing things. I still look at those fondly and think, oh, hey. I mean, there's there's stuff I've seen, and I'm 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 looking at it and I'm thinking, hmm, how can I just you know that idea? I I like that idea I that I did twenty years ago. Let's take that and try it try this now so all that old stuff has failed you um so for me it's not embarrassing um no. it's all part yeah. of a journey it's it's part of who <laughs> i became and who you who lois became so don't don't be afraid don't just try things make mistakes fuck up now and then and uh, change course change your mind but do it with a hundred percent of you. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yay. Yay. I, I, I make sense sometimes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> You're a wise, wise lady. <laughs> You're a wise old woman. That's what you wanted to say. I know you were. <laughs> oh, well. I am too. We're not, we're like pretty much the same age, aren't we? I think you I'm way older. We're close. We're close. Well, you know, <laughs> we're old enough to be giving advice anyway. So here we are. <laughs> I'm a crackling crone, so I can do this. <laughs> All right. Well, we made it this far. It's um, under three hours. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I think our first goal was to keep it an hour long, but um, well, you know. <laughs> hey, I had I'm fun. glad that I had the chance to say everything I wanted to say. Because yeah. in real life panels that are shorter, I always feel like I walk away like, oh, there's so much more I wanted to say about that. Um, all right. So thank you so much, everyone who tuned in, everybody who watched. And remember, um, you'll be able to watch the stream again at a later point. We are streaming at two separate time frames, which we'll specify in our social media. And uh, after that, you can still come back and watch this. So you can watch it in short intervals if that works for you. Um, so whatever works for you, no pressure. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of Lightbox and that you enjoyed this stream. And remember to always keep drawing and always try new things. Bye-bye. <laughs>